Doles is going to take it a couple of yards deep in the end zone where he will take a knee. Interesting, like you said, uh, the coach said at your uh, the show just before we came on the air here um, in his pregame, both the uh, seniors back there. You know, Doles, uh, you know, he pulled with those hamstrings. I could see when he was saying, you know, he was trying to protect them. Those hamstrings last year were very, very, you know, an issue for Doles. Yep. So. And Jetty, who yeah. suffered a mild concussion yes. late in the season, so he wanted to protect these guys because of their value to the offense. They said, Coach, put us in on special teams. We think we can spark this team. Yeah. That's so senior Marcus, leadership. Marcus Fuller leads the Brown offense out onto the field after being replaced in the lineup last week by backup Kyle Marino. Fuller back in at quarterback, and he will start with backs in the broken eye to the right. Strahan split out to the left side, and Troy Doles to the far side right. Out of the shotgun, Fuller to pass. Looks for Strahan, has him completed the 30-yard line. Strahan makes the catch and dives forward out to the three-one yard line. So a pickup of six yards on the catch by Brian Strahan will bring up a second down and four. You know, that was a good confidence build. I know it's the first play of the game, but last week, as we talked about, you know, we went incomplete on the first three plays. And the, for Marcus to get back in there and throw a strike, good for him. Now Doles and Jetty will split out to the far side right. Strahan to the near side left. Coke is the lone back of the backfield on second and four for the Bears. They're at their own 31-yard line. Coke now shifts to the left, and he gets the handoff. It's going to be reversed to the near side. Jetty's got some running room and some blockers across the 40 to the 45-yard line, and he's bumped out of bounds near midfield. A nice reverse there by the Bears, and it winds up in a big gainer. Jetty takes it out to the 46-yard line of Brown. Great job by Jetty, but the offensive line did a great job to seal on that left side. Bears right back up to the line of scrimmage where it's first and 10 from their own 46. Snap Fuller rolling left, looking to pass. Fires downfield, open, and he has his man complete inside Rhode Island territory. The catch is made at the 37-yard line, and that was Troy Doles. Good action there by Marcus Fuller as he runs towards the sideline, plants his foot, and gets Doles on a down and out. Bears picking it up in big chunks on this opening drive, and they're going with a hurry-up offense. Right back up to the line of scrimmage, no huddle. Snap, Fuller looks right, fires to Strahan, who makes the catch. Strahan makes one man miss, makes a second man miss, and he's run out of bounds just short of the first down marker. Brian Strahan on the Rhode Island sideline, and he gets tackled into the Rhode Island kicking net on the Rhode Island sideline, but another gainer on first down by the Bears. Big gainer of about nine yards. I'll tell you one thing, this is a different Brown team than we've seen the last two weeks. A lot of mojo, a lot of excitement here. It was a gain of 10, first and 10 for the Bears from the roadie 27, handoff Coke. Coke trying the right side, and a big gainer for Coke. Takes it down to the 20-yard line for a seven-yard pickup on first down. I'll tell you, Andrew Terry, right guard, got up underneath his man and just drove him down the field as Coke runs north-south hard to that right side. It is second down and three for the Bears at the Rhode Island 20 on the opening drive of the game. And now they motion Coke out of the backfield, fire it across the middle of the Doles. It's caught into the end zone. Touchdown! <coughs> Unbelievable by Doles. He drags the URI guy in as he's hit at the two-yard line. What a touchdown for Brown Bears. What a drive. They could not have executed that drive any any better. Every single play went for positive yardage and big yardage, and the Bears take a 7-0 lead. There's no question about it, Scott. I'll tell you, they were mentally focused. Every single play executed to perfection. You can see the excitement in this Brown Bears team. And Grant Senny on to attempt the point after for the Bears out of the hold of Kyle Marino. It was not a good snap, but Marino got it down, and Senny's kick just gets <laughs> over the crossbar. It is good. One of those wobbly ones. I'll tell you one thing. I thought it was going to go under the crossbar. Just gets over. 7-0. The Bears take the lead after an impressive opening drive. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. Scott Cordishi, John Anderson back at Brown Stadium. An impressive opening drive for the Brown offense, and they march right down the field and put seven on the board for a 7-0 Brown lead with 13-21 to go in the first quarter. And now Grant Senny will kick the ball into the wind to Rhode Island. Senny's kick, kind of an end-over-end -end kick, and it's going to be picked up and bobbled at the 10-yard line. Now picked up, taken across the 15. Oh, what a hit by Connor <laughs> Coughlin as he just planted Miles Holmes into the turf at the 17-yard line. Wow, the sophomore, you could hear that pop all the way up here underneath our microphone. Took me right up off the seat. Whoa, what a hit. By he Connor. is a physical young man, a sophomore from Long, Long Island, Connor Coughlin. That's the way he plays, with an edge. Hey, I'll tell you, that's good for the special team's confidence, too, because they didn't play well last week against Harvard, so 
you can tell there's some spunk in that team. So the roadie offense will start their opening drive at their own 18-yard line. Mraz, the quarterback, is going to hand it off, and running near side is Harold Cooper cutting it up, taking it across the 20 to the 21-yard line for a four-yard pickup. Max Tilke comes in and makes the tackle. Let's set the Rhode Island offense for you. Kevin Galagli is the starting center. Mike Gilbert and Sam Hartman are the guards. Tyler Catalina and David Stemetz are the tackles. Charlie McKeeman is the starting tight end. Starting wide receivers, Kiari Denny and Padre White, along with Marvin Beauvais. Paul Moraz is the starting quarterback, and Harold Cooper starts at tailback. Second down seven for the Rams from their own 21-yard line. And Moraz out of the shotgun, takes the snap, looks left now on the delay, hands it to Cooper. Cooper's got a hole at the middle, and Cooper's going to run it out across the 30, still on his feet, out to the 35-yard line. Hard run by Cooper out to the 37-yard line. Good run there by the sophomore. There's no question. We talked about Cooper at the top of the show, and he's someone you got to control. And I'll tell you, he broke about four tackles. That was all Cooper. Rody right back up to the line of scrimmage as well. They're going with a hurry-up offense, trying to get into a rhythm themselves, and they're going to give it to Cooper again. Cooper up the middle. Not a lot of running room there as he is tackled and driven back after a two-yard pickup to the 39. Let's set the Brown defense for you while we have a moment. Starting at the tackle spots will be Jacob Walder and Tommy Kutchke. Robbie Hughes and Dewey Jarvis are the defensive ends. Will Twyman and Max Tilke, the inside linebackers. It'll be Ryan McDonald and Quentin Rizek at the outside backer spots. On first down, on second down, excuse me, Miraz's pass is incomplete on the far side of the field intended for McKeeman, his tight end. The starting corners, Jordan Ferguson and Will Quigley for Brown and Zach Gillen is the starting safety. And now it's going to be third down and eight for the Rams from their own 39. Brown's defense has been pretty good on third down. Tops in the Ivy League. They're only allowing their opponents to convert at a 35% clip on third down. And they have a chance to get off the field right here. This has been a huge uh, statistic for the Brown Bears. They've done a good job on third down. The offense has got them a lead now for 7-0. But they've got to really shut this down and get the ball back to that offense. Third and eight for Rhode Island from their own 39. Mraz out of the gun, back to pass. Now he's going to step up and run with it. And he's going to be tackled short of the first down. Robbie Hughes gets him from behind. And Hughes got banged in the head by Will Twyman, who came in to help make the tackle as well. I hope Robbie's OK. But it's going to bring up a fourth down for Rhode Island. So the Brown defense holds on third down. And the punting unit for the Rams comes onto the field. That was a great job there by Walter and Krutsky up there in the middle. They were able to flush out. Um, Mraz out of the out of the middle then Hughes did a great job of tracking him down so now on to punt the football away is Connor McHugh averaging just under 40 yards per punt 39.4 got the wind at his back good punt and Jetty's going to take it at the 19 he's hit avoids one tackle takes it across the 20 to the 21 you know that's a senior leadership back there by Jetty he had a Brown defense I mean a URI defender coming right down on him he didn't do a fair catch he was able to catch that ball make a quick move to the right missed it and he picked up four or five yards good start to this game for Brown their offense marches down the field 75 yards for a touchdown on Ince opening drive and the defense holds Rhode Island's offense and forces a punt on their opening possession so now the Brown offense will come back onto the field for the second time tonight and they have it first and 10 of their own 21-yard line. And Fuller will back up into the gun with trips, three receivers to his right. Rosenbauer is the tailback standing behind him. And Fuller's going to pass. Dropping back, they set up the screen to Rosie. Has some blockers at the 25 and the 30. At the 35-yard line, out to the 39-yard line. A pickup of almost 18 yards on first down. You couldn't have a script a better play than that. The screen play executed to perfection by the Brown offense. Rosenberg, no. Picks up 18 yards, almost untouched. Wow, this Brown offense is looking like we thought it was okay. capable of to start the season. First and 10, Brown. They're at their own 39-yard line. Two receivers right, one receiver left. Fuller out of the gun. And Rosenbauer stands to his left in the backfield. Marcus takes the snap, back to pass. Fires Strahan complete. And Strahan takes it out of the 44-yard line for a five-yard pickup on first down. You know, Strahan, they've gone back to him on these five- and six-yard passes. We didn't see that much in the first two games, and he's able to get himself open. He's able to really build separation between himself and the cornerback. Marcus Fuller, a perfect six for six for 76 yards to start this football game. Second and five for the Bears from the 44. Handoff on the inside to uh, Rosenbauer, and he takes it forward for a gain of four. He'll be stopped a yard shy of the first down marker at the 48-yard line of Brown. What a spin move by Rosenberg as he... Blows the tackler right off him, does a nice spin to pick up that yardage. Third and one. 
Fuller out of the gun, has three receivers right, one receiver left. Rosenbauer, the tailback, will he get it here? No. They're going to pass it, and he looks for Strahan, who beats his man, caught at the 30, and down inside the 25-yard line. So the Bears going for a big hit on third down and short, and they cash in. What a great play. As Strahan looks like he's going to do a short little loop, he stutters for one second, and down the sidelines go to a nice touch pass by Fuller, too. He did not drill that ball in there. First and 10, Brown at the Rhode Island 23-yard line. Three receivers right, the tight end lines up to the left. Fuller out of the gun, Rosenbauer the tailback behind him. Give it to Rosie up the middle. Rosenbauer across the 20, bulls his way down to the 18-yard line. A five-yard pickup for Seth Rosenbauer. I'll tell you, we're going to be talking about Fuller and the, and the skill players, but these guys down in the, in the hogs, down low, Hiley, Hall, Gerard, and Terry, they are doing the job here early on. I'll tell you a story about the offensive line in a moment. Fuller. Rolls left, fires it. It's complete to his tight end. The freshman Casey makes the catch, and he's hit out of bounds at the seven-yard line. Anton Casey, the freshman in that tight end, and he pays dividends immediately. Unbelievable, and I love the way that Casey, the freshman, lowers his shoulder and puts a hit on that cornerback. First and goal to go, Brown. They have it inside the Rhode Island eight-yard line. Fuller out of the shotgun. Has Rosenbauer behind him. He's going to fake the handoff. Pearl Fuller keeps it himself, and he's going to be tackled at the line of scrimmage for no gain. So we talk about the offensive line setting the tone in the trenches. Frank Sheehan showed his line, uh, line a video yesterday of former Iowa offensive guard Brandon Scherf, who was a uh, second-round NFL draft pick, I believe. Real tough physical kid, he said. That's the way you got to play. Just like this guy, it's all about attitude. And he gave his team, his line mates, a real emotional speech earlier today as well. The Hogs came ready to play tonight. Oh, you can see it early on, like I just said. These guys are dominating that line of scrimmage. Second down goal to go, Brown at the Rhode Island eight. Three receivers right, Fuller out of the gun. Takes the snap, looks, fires. It's complete to Jetty, and Jetty uh, loses the football. I don't think he ever had possession of it. No, it's he an didn't. incomplete pass. Thought he had the catch, but he never brought it in. Nice job there, though, by Fuller, though. Good coverage by URI. He went off his first receiver, which we hadn't seen much from Marcus in the first couple of games. He locked down into his second receiver, and then really had some patience because he had some good coverage and found Jetty coming across. Yeah, you see the replay, and Jetty never had possession of the football. Couldn't quite bring it in. So now it's going to bring up a third down goal to go for the Bears, and this is important. You want to get points out of this drive. You don't want to turn over here. Absolutely not, and you want points in the red zone. Three receivers right, one of which is Rosenbauer in the right slot. Motion jetty. Fuller fires it underneath to Rosenbauer, and he's going to be tripped up at the five-yard line, so it'll be fourth down goal to go from the five, and you would think they'll bring Grant Senny on and try to tack on three more, and that's what the Bears will do. You know, the, the center uh, snap, uh, Hiley's doing a great job here early on. You know, we were high at uh, Brian, his snaps uh, early in the game. Harvard, they were high. I've seen that he's gotten that under control here. Grant Senny on the season. Three for three on his field goal twi tries with a long of 45. This one will be from between the hash marks and about 22 yards away. Snap hold is down. Senny's kick is up, and it is no good. Senny missed it wide to the left. So the Bears get nothing out of that drive. Yeah, that's a tough one. He pulled it to the left there. Uh, the wind is blowing to the left towards us. I'm not sure if he compensated for that because it is blowing hard out there. You can see those flags, but that's a tough one. That's too bad. The Bears move the ball very effectively again on offense, but this time they come up with nothing to show for it. Senny misses the chip shot field goal wide to the left, and you mentioned that wind. It is a factor tonight. It is blowing strong out of the northeast at about 20 miles per hour. So now the roadie offense comes onto the field for the second time, and they'll take over first and 10. They'll start this drive at their own 20-yard line. 7 nothing. Brown leads URI with 7.28 to go in the first quarter. Mraz handoff Cooper. Cooper, no running room up the middle. He has to fight to gain a yard out to the 21. That was a great job by uh, Krupski right there. I'll tell you, he got up underneath his man, drove him back, clogged the middle there, was able to spin off. He did a nice job there in making that tackle and really limiting Cooper to only about a yard gain. Tommy Kutschke, the junior out of Lake Forest, Illinois. And the freshman, Darrell Banfield, is in at defensive tackle right now. Second down, nine, Rhode Island from their own 21-yard line. Snap on the delay. Again, the handoff, Cooper. Cooper's going to take this one, and he's going to be stood up and driven back after reaching the 24-yard line. Darrell Banfield, 
a very interesting story for the Bears. A young man out of New York who had a tough, tough upbringing, grew up in, in, in poverty, and uh, the Bronx, I, right? I, a Bronx, yeah, I believe is uh, first generation college, and not only in college, but going to an Ivy League school. What an impressive, impressive young man. Third down and six, Rhode Island with the ball at its own 24. Mraz flares it out of the backfield and nearly had it picked <laughs> off by Dewey Jarvis. It's incomplete. <laughs> Jarvis is spanking his hand there because he got up on it. And he, he's still shaking his head. He's thinking, I might have been able to pull that one down for a pick six. Nonetheless, the Bears defense comes up with its second stop of the night, and they'll force the Rhode Island punting unit to come back onto the field. Great start to this game. Both sides of the football really clicking. The only blemish is a missed field goal attempt that could have had the Bears up 10-0. Instead, they lead it 7-zip. No question about it. I'll tell you, the defenses look really sharp and the offense as well. Jetty back deep to receive the McHugh punt. Alex standing at his own 35-yard line. Low snap, McHugh gets his leg into this one, and it's a wobbler. Jetty lets it bounce, and he's going to fall on it at the 33-yard line. And that is where the Brown offense will come onto the field when we come back. 6.07 to go first quarter, 7-0 Brown. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. If your home is your castle, shouldn't your mortgage lender treat you like royalty? At Dexter Credit Union, we roll out the red carpet with friendly, courteous, and professional service, not to mention competitive mortgage rates and flexible terms. We also offer construction loans, home equity loans, and home equity lines of credit. If it's related to your castle, we're here for you, your highness. Visit DexterCU.org or call 401-724-6200, extension 175. Member NCUA, equal housing lender. First and 10 for the Brown offense from their own 33-yard line. Fuller out of the gun, fakes the handoff, sets in the pocket, fires it out of the backfield, complete to Coke. Coke on the run, takes it out across the 40-yard line and picks up seven on the catch and run. Great, great play call there. I mean, fake to Coke, and then they hit Coke coming out of the backfield. He's wide open. But I'll tell you, this Brown offense has put themselves in a great position. It's been second and short almost every time we've had the football early on here. Second down three. Bears have it at their own 40. Rody showing blitz. See if they back out of it. The Bears were able to pick it up. And Fuller resets to Mike Linebacker. Now he drives back into the gun. Second down, three. Fuller back to pass, set up the screen to Coke. Coke makes the catch, can't make a man miss. He fights to get back to the 40 for no gain. Good open field tackle made there by Rhode Island. It was number eight, Selwyn Nicholas. Yeah, it was a good job there also by number 22. Came up uh, to give him some assistance there as well. Holmes. Miles Holmes, the senior from San Francisco. Third down, three for the Bears on their own 40-yard line. Coke remains in a tailback. He stands to the left of Fuller. Two receivers left, two receivers right. Marcus the pass, fires, and it is caught, and Strahan falls down, and they're gonna give him the first down as he falls down just across the 43-yard line to the 44. Bears pick up the first down. Good job by Strahan there to know where the marker was, so when he did his turn back, he knew where he had to be. And he gave himself that three yards as the ball was down. Then he, when he fell, he was able to fall in first down territory. Brown football brought to you by Academy Bus. 4.59 to go first quarter. 7-0 Brown leads Rhode Island. Fuller out of the gun. Hands it off. Running left. And up the middle is Coke. Coke takes it out across the 47-yard line for a three-yard gain on the first down carry. You know, as I was putting together a little highlight motivational film for the team this week, which we show Friday night, the night before the game, I took film from the last two years against Rhode Island. High snap, Fuller gets it, hands it to Coke, and Coke takes it forward for a first, oh, close to a first down. It'll be about a half yard shy. Nice run by Coke, but on cue, what I noticed in putting together that highlight film, Andrew Coke ran very effectively the last two years against the Rams, and he's doing it again here tonight. He is, there's no question about it. He is running hard. They're going right back to him here. And he picks up the first down across the 45-yard line of Rhode Island down to the Rams, 43. You know, he's been a very durable running back, and he runs north-south. He's not fancy. He's not going to cut. He's not going to spin. He's going to take you on. He's going to take the hit on, and he's going to run north-south. First and 10 for the Bears from the Rams, 43-yard line. Fuller out of the gun. Coke standing to his left. Marcus takes the snap. He's going to pass on first down. He's looking, fires it down the sideline, and Doles makes the catch with a man all over him. That wow. Was, wow, that was all Doles right there. He had a guy all over him, number 24, the cornerback, 
was on him. He couldn't really get anything open. He was able to spin his body with a guy on him and make a great catch. Shocked we didn't get a flag there because Isaiah Hill was draped all over Doles and still made the back shoulder fade catch. First and 10, Brown at the Rams, 21. Fuller out of the gun. He's going to hand it to Coke. Up the middle, Andrew Coke driving forward across the 15-yard line and down inside the 14. You could see that push from up here, that offensive line just dominating that, that line of scrimmage. The push was there. They were five yards down before Coke even had anybody touching them. John Hiley, the starting center, Andrew Terry and Bruce Hall, the starting guards, and Matt Girard and Dakota Girard, the tackles. You also see Clay Eubank in a guard as well. Second down three for the Bears from the Rhode Island 14-yard line. Fuller out of the shotgun will pass. He fires it to the corner of the end zone to Jetty, and it is incomplete. Good coverage there by Miles Holmes. Holmes does a great job there locking in and using the sideline as he pushes Jetty. So Jetty has to run to that back corner. Doesn't have much room to work, but Jetty almost pulled off an immaculate catch as he reached over the top of him. Here's another big third down here. No doubt. And we're inside that red zone, and we always talk about that statistic in which you need to pick up points inside the red zone. It's so crucial. Bears tonight on third down are three of four at 75%. They have it third down and three at the roadie 14-yard line. Sending Doles in motion left to right. And now they fake the handoff. Doles comes out of the backfield. They fire it to him. He makes the catch, and Doles... He's going to be stopped short of the first down. He needed to gain the 11, and it, it, well, they, they spot his progress close to the 11. This is going to be close. Real I think close. he's going to be about the length of a football, maybe a half yard shy. Yeah, it's going to be really close, but that was a good job uh, by uh, URI right there. And the Bears are going to go yeah. for it right up to the oh. line of scrimmage. Quarterback sneak. Fuller's got the first down across the 10-yard line. You know, that's something that we didn't haven't seen in the last uh, couple of weeks. Put Fuller underneath center. Get him under there, get under there quickly and get the push from your, your line up front and he got the first down. Two and a half minutes to go, first quarter, seven nothing Brown. And it looks like they're threatening for more here. They have it first and 10, just outside of the Rhode Island 10 yard line. I love the tempo that this offense is showing right now with the hurry up, they are really moving the football. Swanky, Jetty, and Strahan split out to the far side right. Oliver Buca is the tight end, he lines up tight left. First and 10 from just outside the 10. Fuller out of the gun, takes the snap, fakes the handoff, fires it right, and it's caught by Jetty. And Jetty takes it into the end zone. Touchdown, Brown. What a great route that was. Split end screen as Jetty just comes back towards the line of scrimmage, catches the football, and just shows his explosive speed as he just darts 10 yards right up the gut. Bears are having their way with the Rams early on in this one as Alex Jetty takes it into the end zone for a Brown touchdown. I'll tell you, this is exciting, Scott. This is the team that we talked about before the season started against Bryant. This offense, all seniors, all stepping up here today. Grant Senny's point after attempt is good, and with 2.03 to go in the first quarter, it's now the Bears 14 and the Rams nothing. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. Scott Credici, John Anderson, we are back at Brown Stadium and the Bears have raced out to a 14-0 lead on the roadie Rams. Grant Senny with the ball teed up at the 35-yard line, set to kick it into the wind to Rhode Island. Gets his leg into it, high end over end kick, and Delgado is going to take it inside his own 10-yard line. Delgado across the 15 to the 20, to the 25-yard line, Delgado at the 30, at the 35-yard line, near side, still on his feet, and he takes it out across the 45-yard line, however, a penalty marker is down on the play, and that could negate a terrific return by Robbie Delgado. It's too bad on that penalty because that penalty was uh, committed up here near the 45. Delgado had already done all the work, and it's too bad that's going to be pushed back on him. You know, we had some problems with that, uh, that kickoff uh, a team letting up some big yards uh, last week and yeah, the week before. So looked like Will Quigley was being held yep. by number 49 for Rhode Island. And that is uh, Shane Nashahowski. Yeah, but he picked up that hold just around the 40-yard line, and Delgado had already really made a nice cutback to this to the Brown sideline and done all the hard work. So that's a big break for the Bears. It certainly is. It negates what would have been terrific field position for the Rams. They would have started this drive at about their own 43-yard line, and instead they get backed up to their own 29. Minute 53 to go in the first quarter, and Brown has really controlled this first quarter much like Harvard did last week against the Bears, and much like the Bears did against Bryant when they led 10-0 early in that football game. 
plenty of football left there. You're no right. question, a lot of football left. First and 10 for the Rams from their own 29-yard line. Mirage's going to pass, flares it out to Cooper. Nobody picked him up coming out of the backfield, and Cooper's run out of bounds across the 35-yard line to the 36 of the Bears. Seven-yard pickup on the catch and run for Harold Cooper. Nice job by Will Quigley, though, to come off of his man at the cornerback spot and grab Cooper because Cooper was wide open on the sidelines there. And if not, he's off to the races. It'll be second down and three for Rhode Island from their own 36-yard line. Mirage out of the gun, two receivers left, one receiver right. Cooper stands to his right of the backfield. Bears showing blitz. McDonald comes up to the line of scrimmage. And now Mirage to pass. He fires it, and it is incomplete. And they call Quigley for a hold, it looks like, on Fadre White. Late flag comes down. There was a late flag there, but Quigley did get his arm, I think, up underneath him there. But uh, the Bear Bears were an all-out blitz there. They had good coverage, too. I mean, Quigley had good coverage. I don't think he really had to hold the guy there. So they call a pass interference yeah. instead of a hold, and it's a spot foul. Take it out to the 44-yard line of the Bears. Automatic first down for Rhode Island. Their first first down. I checked that. Their second first down of the game. They had a first down on their opening drive. First and 10, Rams from their own 44. Mirage is going to pass. Looks left, fires left behind his intended receiver, Kyrie Denny, and it is incomplete. Denny was open out there, and a, a nice down and out. He got underneath the center, underneath Ferguson there, the cornerback for the Bears, but the pass was way behind him by Mirage. He couldn't stop and catch that ball. Minute 17 to go first quarter. 14-0, Brown leads Rhode Island. And the Rams break the huddle, sending three receivers to the far side left and one to the near side right. Mraz out of the shotgun. Cooper standing to his right in the backfield. Mraz takes the snap, back to pass, looking for Cooper out of the backfield, and he overthrows it. A little bit too high for Cooper. Cooper's not the tallest guy, only 5'9", and Mraz just threw that a little bit too high. Yeah, a little bit too high, right through his hands. He was open out here in the flats. There's no question about that. But yeah, Bears uh, are going to have to find a way to pick him up Kai, out of the backfield. Back He's been open a couple of times. He is a dangerous weapon, as we mentioned, probably the most dangerous offensive weapon the Rams have. Third down 10 for the Rams from their own 44-yard line, and Rhode Island is 0 for 2 on their third down conversions thus far tonight. Two receivers left, one receiver right. Bears crowd the line of scrimmage, showing a blitz. Mraz out of the shotgun is going to be blitzed, and he gets rid of it across the middle, and it is incomplete. The pass intended for Fadre White, but Mraz felt the pressure. And didn't throw the best pass. No, Mraz felt the pressure there. And actually, I mean, his receiver was wide open underneath. Good coverage, though, by Quigley. But uh, the guy was open. He just couldn't get the ball to him. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if defensive coordinator Mike Kelleher dials up a lot of third down blitzes on Mraz because this is a quarterback that didn't throw the football at all in high school. He ran a option offense. Didn't throw it till he went to junior college. McHugh's punt, end over end. Jetty going to let it bounce and it's going to take a Rhode Island bounce all the way down inside the 10 yard line to the nine of Brown with 55 seconds to go in the first quarter it is 14 nothing Bears and they'll take over first and 10 of their own nine yard line this is the first time the Bears have really had bad field position to start off a drive the last few drives we've had great field position so we'll see how they do here inside their 10 but it's going to be crucial to be smart with the football good snaps you know make good decisions uh, in terms of where they're going to throw this football because the worst thing you can do is turn this ball over after you've been dominating this quarter. Brown football brought to you in part by the Hotel Providence. With under a minute to go in the first quarter, Bears on top of Rhode Island, 14-0. They start this drive inside their own 10 at the 9-yard line, where it's first down and 10. Rosenbauer is in at tailback as Fuller operates out of the shotgun on first and 10. And Rhode Island looked like they jumped defensively. Fuller's pass is complete to Doles, and Doles shoestring tackled at about the 13-yard line after a pickup of four. Let's see if they get Rhode Island for jumping offside. If so, that would make it first and five, and it is offside in the Rams. Yeah, it was on the left end. He jumped. Uh, good discipline by Brown not to move right there, but he did jump into, into that neutral zone, and, you know, he caused that. That's a great play here for the Bears. Now you Fuller him. got him with a hard Bugs count on that one. Yeah, he got him with a hard count, but, hey, now you're first down and five. Pick up five yards here. Yep, they'll move it out to the 14-yard line. And you're going to get through this quarter, you know, basically 14 to nothing, 48 seconds to go, going into the wind. I mean, we have been playing very well. A 
Again, this is the Brown team we thought we'd see to start the season. Yeah. And uh, they've been clicking on all cylinders here in the first quarter. Really could be up 17 to nothing quite easily in this one. Missed a short field goal on their second drive of the game. First and five for the Bears in their own 14-yard line. Fuller out of the gun. Takes the snap. Handed off Rosenbauer. Rosie up the middle, just pulls his way forward, and he picks up four yards out to the 18-yard line, and that will likely be the final play of the first quarter. And the good news for Brown, they're going to have the wind at their backs in quarter number two. It's coming across the field, but more at their backs as they head toward the south end zone. Yeah, there's no question about it. they're going to have the wind uh, towards their backs. It's going to be uh, much better for them. But, I mean, we got to look at this first quarter and say, I mean, of the quarters we've played through Harvard and through Bryant, I mean, this team, I mean, it, it's almost 360, yep. the execution. Bears with a 14-0 lead over Rhode Island after one quarter. We'll step aside, and we'll be back with second quarter action from Brown Stadium after this. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. A 14-0 lead over the Rams on second and one. They hand it to Rosenbauer, and he has a first down out of the 25-yard line. Six-yard gain for Seth Rosenbauer. Four carries for 19 yards tonight for Seth Rosenbauer. And how about the first quarter of action for Marcus Fuller? The Bears senior quarterback completes 15 of 17 passes for 167 yards and two touchdowns. So for those who question Phil Estes' decision to go back to his senior quarterback and try captain, uh, I think Marcus Fuller certainly uh, helped make his coach look good <laughs> with that decision. You know, I say that because, you know, some of the people on these bulletin boards, you know, they think they know more than Coach Estes, and et cetera, and it's, it's really sad, to be honest with you. Fuller's pass complete to Sturhan to the far side of the field, out of bounds across the 35 to the 36-yard line, and it is another Brown first down and another completion from Marcus Fuller. And I say that, you know, well, it's, easy it's, to, it's, it's easy to be that Monday it's morning easy quarterback. It's to be the armchair quarterback, no yeah. question, but you, you got to be at practice every day, and you yeah. have to see how these kids perform. You know, exactly. do, do you really think coaches yes. are going to start kids <laughs> that they think aren't as good as other kids? It just doesn't make sense. Exactly. Hand off Rosenbauer. He runs right with it, and Rosenbauer tackled across the 40 yard line after a three yard pickup on the first down carry and you're so right on that Scott because you know he's a senior Marcus was here last year he worked all summer he was watching film every day all summer I mean you know he knows this offense I mean he just needed to get himself in the right mojo and get the things clicking second down seven for the Bears from their own 40 Fuller fakes the handoff, rolls right under pressure, and he loses the football, gets sacked, fumbles it. It's going to be picked up, scooped up, and taken in for a touchdown by Adam Parker. Uh, he's hurt, too. He's a tough kid. He's down. He's holding his arm. He's well, not getting up quickly. That, he dislocated that shoulder week one against Bryant, and he may have just done it again. Yeah, he's feeling it. Yeah, he's, got, he's holding that hand. They popped that shoulder in against Bryant, and he came back in and played. And that's a huge play for the Rams. That play, Marcus should have gotten rid of the football. He Whoa. should have just thrown it away under pressure or yeah. tucked it in. He tried to tuck it in, and when he did, he lost the handle. He, he tried to throw the football, and he was thinking of it, and then he held on to it, but he didn't get it down quick enough, and it got knocked out. But you're right, Scott. He should have just thrown it into the bench, and it would have been an incomplete pass, yep. no foul. So now the point after attempt by Rohrwasser who's four for four in his PATs this season. The kick is up, and it is good. 13-34 to go, and it's now 14-7. Brown has its lead cut to seven by Rhode Island. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. Scott Kredishi, John Anderson, back at Brown Stadium, where Rhode Island gets on the board with a defensive touchdown. A scoop and score by Adam Parker off a fumble by Marcus Fuller. Fuller was pumping the ball, and then he decided to try to tuck it back in, and as he was trying to tuck it in, he lost control. Do they have a tuck rule in college? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. No tuck rule here. The Patriots and Tom Brady got that ball back in the 2001 NFL playoffs. Here's a low kick picked up by Doles of the 15, to the 20-yard line, to the 25, and out across the 30-yard line goes Troy Doles to the 31. Great field position here for the Bears, but you know they gotta put that in the rear view mirror. They dominated that first quarter that offense get back out on that field and make something happen here. So Fuller is right back up and in the offensive huddle with offensive coordinator Frank Sheehan on the sideline as they get set to come out onto the field. Good field position for this drive for the Bears. They'll start it at their own 31, but Rhode Island now has a little life on that sideline of theirs as they trail only 14 to seven with 13 27 to go in the second quarter. Fuller's a tough lead. You're gonna have to take him off on a stretcher. I mean, he 
He got hit hard there, and he's right back out there. No there. question, but Marcus is going to have to learn to take care of the football. Yeah. I mean, that yeah. is important, and that is what has killed the Bears in the opening two weeks. First and 10, Brown from the 31. Handoff running right is Andrew Koch to the short side of the field, and Koch takes it out to about the 33-yard line. Give him a gain of a yard and a half maybe on the carry. Well, you know, this is the type of series, like you said, uh, Scott, take care of the football. This is the type of series where you got to move the chains like you did in the first quarter. I mean, that first quarter was just dominated by Brown. I mean, they had the football for 10 minutes, three for five on conversions, 220 total yards in that uh, first quarter against URI's 37. Unbelievable. Gain of y a yard for Andrew Coco has six carries for 28 yards here in the first half, and an injured Rhode Island player, Tim Wineclaw, the starting free safety, who is second on the team in total tackles, coming into the game with 33 on the season. And he is being helped off by the Rhode Island training staff. Wineclaw slowly making his way to the roadie sideline. List Colt Peavy, a redshirt senior, as his replacement. Although it looks like instead they have brought in number six, Dunstan Payne, will come in and take his place at free safety. Second and nine for the Bears from their own 32. Fuller with two receivers left, one receiver right. Colt, the tailback, standing behind him. On second and nine for the Bears on their own 32-yard line. Rody showing blitz from the right side. Now Coke moves to the left to try to pick it up for Fuller. Snap to Fuller, back to pass. Fires it deep downfield for Alex Jetty. A diving catch oh, by what Jetty. Catch. What a grab. Unbelievable. He extends his body, beats his defender, and just lays it all out, catches it in the air. What a throw by Fuller and a catch by Jetty. The junior from North Dakota, Attleboro, Massachusetts, Alex Jetty with a big grab. And the Bears have it first and 10 at the Rhode Island 33-yard line. First and 10 for Brown at the roadie, 33. Three receivers right, Coke the tailback, Fuller out of the gun, rolling right, looking to throw again. Fuller gets rid of the football, and Doles can't make the catch. The pass thrown out of bounds, incomplete. That was a good pass, though. He had to throw it where he did, and if he didn't, it could have been an interception if he tried to force it in there. So good pass by Marcus there to protect the football. It'll be second down and 10 for the Bears from the Ram 33-yard line. Bears send three receivers, Strahan, Doles, and Jetty to the near side right. Koch is the tailback. Fuller identifies the Mike linebacker, now backs up into the shotgun formation. And now it looks like we have a timeout being called here. And I'm not sure the, uh, the official, I think, moved it back to the left hash mark where it was prior to the first down play. So Fuller operates out of the gun with three receivers to his right. Second and 10, Brown at the Rhode Island 33-yard line. Fake the handoff, Fuller pumps. Now he looks, now he's going to run with the football, has some room, and he's going to dive forward across the 30 down to the 29-yard line of the Rams. Smart decision by Fuller there as all his receivers were well defended downfield, and he didn't try to force a football. He just tucked it in and picked up five yards. It will bring up a third down and six for the Bears, and tonight the Bears three of five on third down at 60%. Fuller out of the gun, takes the snap, back to pass. Looks, fires across the middle, incomplete. Threw it a little bit too far ahead of Alex Jetty. And this is probably that four down territory where they are in the field, too far for a Grant Senny field goal but too close to punt it, so they'll probably go for it on fourth down right here. From this point, it would be about a, let's see, maybe about a 46 to 47-yard field goal attempt. Now, Senny did hit a 45-yarder in week one, and he does have a little bit of a breeze at his back, but Phil Lustis is going to keep his offense on the field here, and I think they're going to call a timeout to talk this play over. With 11.51 to go until halftime, it's Brown 14 and Rhode Island 7. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. On the season is one for four on fourth down. Here it's fourth and six from the Rams, 29. Two receivers right, one to the left. Fuller out of the shotgun. Rams showing blitz, they back out of it. Fuller back to pass, fires to Strahan who makes the first down catch at the 20 yard line of Rhode Island. 
The pass was thrown a little behind <laughs> him, but Strahan was able to adjust and make the grab. That was all Brian Strahan right there. Tough pass by Foley, threw it behind him as he was running towards us. He was able to plant that left foot and reach back. Bears right back up to the line of scrimmage. Fuller hands it off, up the middle, Andrew. Koki fumbled the ball and the Bears fell on it. Wow, great Matt job. Matt Gerard was able to jump on at the right tackle. And again, we're starting <laughs> to see turnovers rear their ugly head for the Bears here. Fuller had one that led to a Rhode Island touchdown in there. Coke lost the ball, but fortunately, his right tackle jumped on it. Gerard swift as a cat right there. He jumped on that ball. That may be the first time Matt Gerard's <laughs> ever been described as swift as a cat. I'm gonna tell him you said that. <laughs> Second down and 10 for the Bears from the Ram 20-yard line. Fuller out of the gun with two receivers right, one receiver left, it's Jetty. Marcus takes the snap, handed to Johnny Pena. Oh. Pena pulls his way forward inside the 15-yard line. A pickup of six yards for Johnny Pena, the hard-running Johnny Pena. Johnny Pena picking up just where he left off last week against Harvard, running north-south and running hard between the tackles. It'll be third down and Call it a short five for the Bears from just inside the Ram 15-yard line. Fuller out of the gun, back to pass, fires to the end zone, and it is caught. Touchdown, Oliver Buca, the tight end, with his second touchdown catch of the season. Buca with a post pattern from the right side going left. Marcus Fuller shows a lot of patience there as he's able to beat both defenders and split it. That throws a great pass. Wow, Brown Bears look good. Third touchdown pass of the game for Marcus Fuller for Buca, his second touchdown catch in as many weeks, and his second touchdown catch of the sophomore's career. Now the point after attempt by Senny to make it a 14-point Brown lead once again out of the hold of Kyle Marino. High snap, Marino, great job getting it down, and the point after is up and no good. You know, that's tough. That's another one no good, but I got to tell you something. I can't really kind of blame that on the kicker. It's all timing, and those snaps have been high. Marino had to go up for it, and once you break that rhythm, it's hard. Not to defend Oliver Buca, the long snapper, but he just caught a touchdown, probably a little bit winded, and he gets out there and snaps a high one, but Buca is the long snapper, and he's done a pretty good job for the Bears this season, taking over for the unbelievably reliable Cortland Clavet. But that time the snap a little bit high. And like I said, Buca just got finished running a seam route for a touchdown. So the Bears lead is 13, 20 to seven. They've missed a point after attempt and a field goal tonight. That was a great job though by the offense to bounce back like that. Fourth down conversion, they made that pass. Great pass by Strahan. But more importantly, after the last uh, series they had out here to come back now and drive down and put some points on, that's mental focus. So with 10.22 to go in the second quarter, Bears with a 20 to seven lead as Grant Senny gets set to kick it deep to Rhode Island. Delgado and Cooper standing at around their own goal line to receive the kick of Grant Senny. Senny has it teed up at the 35 yard line, checks his line on both sides, approaches the football, gets his leg into it, high end over end kick. And Cooper's going to take this one at the 7. Across the 10 to the 15-yard line. Cooper to the 20. To the 25-yard line. Cooper tripped up across the 30 out to the 32-yard line. And it was Coughlin, I think, that got him yeah. oh. on the trip. Number Otherwise, the Cooper could have been uh, off to the races. There's no question. Number 3, the sophomore, Connor Coughlin, he's the one who really swiped him with his foot and just kind of gave him an ankle tackle that just took him off balance and kind of gave him a, a trip where he kind of got another 10 yards, but he was off balance, just dove down into the dirt. But you're right, I mean, Cochran doesn't do that shoestring tackle, and Cooper could have been off to the races. 10-14 to go, second quarter. 20-7, to seven. Brown with a 13-point lead on Rhode Island. And now Mraz and the Ram offense will start this drive at their own 32. Fake the handoff, fumble, football by Mraz, but he falls on his own fumble. Dewey Jarvis fell on top of him. And so the Rams are going to lose five on that play. Almost a big break there for the Brown Bears as Jarvis almost gets that. Mraz just gets down on the football. Well, Would have Dewey, been a huge mistake for URI there. Dewey Jarvis is a junior, but because he missed all of last year due to knee surgery, he could technically have three more another years. year of eligibility. Yeah, three years this year and two more. He's exciting to watch, isn't he? Oh, he is. There's no question about it. What a transition from linebacker to end. 
Second and 15 for the Rams from their own 27. And the pass is complete. And it's a first down catch by Boivé. And he takes it all the way out across midfield to the Brown 48-yard line. Marvin Bove. Yeah, Bove's a Rhode Island guy. Yeah. Yeah, local, local talent, which is good to see. Does a nice route, nice post route. Gets in between the safety and the cornerback in zone coverage. Brown was. He's wide open across the middle. And that's that a nice is catch. the biggest offensive play of the night for the Rams, who really haven't moved the football oh. much on offense. And now they're going to hand it off to Cooper. Cooper cuts it up the middle, and Cooper manages to find his way to the 45-yard line. I'll tell you what, that was <laughs> kind of a slippery little guy in traffic, isn't he? You, you remember uh, the short running back that the Pats used to have uh, way, way back. Was it Minnie McCarron? Was it, it yep, Matt Caron, yeah, He was able to find his way up through those guards yep. and tackles, and Cooper did the same thing. I mean, you thought he was going to be at the line of scrimmage, and he's scuttled back and scooted up and picks up four yards. The game to the 45, officially a gain of three, second and seven for the Rams from the Bears' 45-yard line. Mraz out of the shotgun, takes the snap, he's going to pass. Looks right, and he fires right. Back shoulder catch made by Bove, and he's going to take it down into the end zone for a touchdown, but there is a penalty marker down at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, there's a penalty marker at the line of scrimmage, and... Uh, I think it's going to come back the way I see the uh, offensive URI's reaction here as uh, their players have got their hands on their, their hips looking down and they're not looking excited and, you know, they're kind of looking at each other and it dejected here. And that was a good, a good uh, pass route by Beauvais. He was able to shake himself from quickly, get open, and, you know, make a move, and then he was off to the races. But, hey, mistakes will kill you in this football game, and that's a big mistake by URI right there. See the call from the official here. Personal foul on the insert base for the first six yards. Wow, 15 yard personal foul, foul penalty foul. as it is hands to the face by one of the offensive linemen for Rhode Island. That'll back them up 15 yards into their own territory back to the Rhode Island 40 yard line. So it goes from a Rhode Island touchdown to now Oof. second down and 22 from their own 40. It's amazing what penalties can do to you. Wow. Change the field position immensely right there. Eight and a half minutes to go here in the first half. 20 to 7, Brown leads Rhode Island. Second and 22 for the Rams from their own 40. Mraz out of the shotgun. Mraz takes a snap, looks right, fires right. He has a man wide open, and the catch is made on the far side of the field, and running out of bounds is carried Connie Denny. And boy, it looked like the Bears had real soft coverage there on Denny. Yeah, they did. They were in the zone, they were actually in the zone coverage. And they were really soft off the ball. Cornerback was probably about 12 yards off. Safety was kind of deeper. Just came right up underneath him and picked up 10 yards. So now it's going to bring up a third and 10 as they pick up 12 yards on that play. Third and 10 from the Brown 48-yard line. Rhode Island tonight is 0 for 3 on third down. And now the officials stop the clock as Rhode Island uses its first time out of the half. Time out on the field with 8-11 to go in the second quarter. Brown 20, Rhode Island 7. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. Mraz out of the shotgun, sends two receivers to the near side left. The tight end lines up to the right. Mraz back to pass, steps up, penalty marker down, fires it, has a man. It's complete for a first down for the moment to the Brown 20-yard line. Let's see what the penalty marker is all about. That flag came out immediately. Bovey wasn't even set in the pocket. And that flag was out. Is it a hold or with the Bears offside? Rhodey's clapping, so it's on Brown. That's why I said it came out so quick. I mean, he wasn't even set. Encroachment on the defense will be declined, and the result of the play is a first down for the Rams at the Bears' 21-yard line. So this has been Rhode Island's best offensive drive of the game. They have it at the Bears' 21-yard line where it's first down and 10 as we tick under eight minutes to play in the first half. Brown on top of Rhode Island, 20 to seven. Mraz out of the gun, sends a receiver right and a receiver left. So Mraz takes the snap and I think we're gonna have a false start here. Yeah, that was a definitely a false start, but the question is who's gonna be on Brown again? Ooh, looks like the Bears jumped again. That's twice this defensive line has jumped. And you know, when you're taught on defense, the fundamentals of defense is out of the peripheral vision of your eye as you're watching the football. You're not listening to hard counts. So really, they should be w watching that football for it to snap. 
Yeah, both Bears defensive tackles, uh, Tommy Kutchke and Daryl Banfield. They jumped on jumped the Jumped offside, and they're, like you said, they're, they're on either side of the football. football. Right. So it's going to be first and five for Rhode Island at the Browns' 16-yard line. Now Mraz sends two receivers left. Mraz out of the gun. Oh. Bears jumped again. Free play for the Rams, and Mraz just throws the football away. That's going to give him a first down. Boy, Mraz yeah, wow. must be doing something with a hard count, but at some point, these Bears defensive tackles have to understand. Look at the ball. Yeah, there's no question about it. I mean, they are next to the football in their peripheral vision. Just technique you are taught as a defensive lineman is you're watching that football in the very corner of that eye, and these guys are just jumping. So it's going to be first and 10 for Rhode Island at the Brown 11-yard line. Brown Bears are going to just settle down right now on the defensive side of the football. They played well all game. Just going to get back into their rhythm. 7.22 to go first half. 20-7 to 7 Brown, but the Rams threatening here. Mraz back to pass. Looks left corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete. Good coverage there by Will Quigley as he was really in tight on the receiver. It was really kind of close to pass interference. I was... He was so tight inside of him. Good, great. I mean, you couldn't get any closer to him without touching him. But Will did a great job. Quickly in Beauvais going at it in the left corner of the end zone. Incomplete. Bring up second down 10 for the Rams. They send two receivers to the far side right. And one to the near side left, Beauvais, one-on-one -on -one with Quigley again. Fake the handoff. Mraz fires to the end zone. It is incomplete. That time he tried to find McKeeman, his tight end. It was double covered on the play. Yeah, he was double covered. He had the safety coming over the top. He had almost three guys on, on top of him. That was a tough, tough pass to make right there. So now big play here for the Bears oh. defense. They'd love to come up with a third down stop and have Rhode Island settle for a field goal try if they can. Rams today one for four on third down at 25%. They have a third and 10 at the Brown 11 yard line. Two receivers left, one receiver right. Mraz backs up into the shotgun formation. Third down 10, Rhode Island. Mraz takes the snap back to pass. Looks left, now fires right, and it is tipped and intercepted. Oh. Quigley tipped it, and it was picked off by the Bears. Ferguson, number six. Wow. Oh, Rizik. Rizik, number eight with the interception. I got I to gotta apologize to him. It looked like a six up here, but number eight comes up with a huge play at the goal line. Wow, so the Rams get no points. Woo. The bad news for the Bears, they're going to start this drive at their own one-yard line, but nonetheless, a turnover by Rhode Island as that ball. Great coverage by Will Quigley. He's the one that was right on his man, Beauvais. He turned, saw the ball, tipped it, and then in there to pick it up was Quentin Rizek. No question about that. And URI was wanted that matchup. They had Quigley out there one-on-one. -on -one. He was in man coverage. You saw that pass right away when they set up here. I said, they're going at Quigley. You could tell it. And Quigley, the tough kid from Marlboro, Mass, I'll tell you, he's not going to break down. Great play by Will. Quentin Rizek, the senior from Albuquerque, New Mexico, comes up with his first interception of the season. And now the Bears, they get Rhode Island to jump. <laughs> Handoff Rosenbauer up the middle and he drives forward to the 12 yard line for a first down. Bears will decline the offside penalty and take the result of that Seth Rosenbauer run. Wow, what a change there. But I'll tell you, you talk about defense, bend, don't break. That was a defense that had been bending, you know, two, three offsides, big play, you know, and then to make the interception, that, that's just a great, great football team not to, to break down there and, and no points given up. That's the first time the Bears have had a turnover this season. They haven't forced one until yeah, that yeah. Rizik interception. You are right. You are right. And they needed that badly. Be great if they could put together a nice long sustained drive that results in points just before halftime leaving Rody with no time to respond. Yeah but also for your defense to make a play like that gives you so much confidence no inside question. that red zone. First and 10, Brown. They decline the offside penalty. The Bears have it at their own 12-yard line. Fuller out of the gun. Fakes the handoff to Rosenbauer. Pumps. Now he fires it deep downfield for Jetty. <laughs> and he can't make the catch. Oh. It's nearly intercepted, too. Flag. Jetty, 
and roughing the passer. I think Fuller got whacked in the backfield, and we may have a roughing the passer call on Rhode Island. I was going to say that was going to be a great completion because I'll tell you, Fuller stood in the gun. He took the hit. He saw it coming. He released that football, and I'll tell you, he got walloped. Unless this is a holding penalty. They look like they're going to move the Bears back. Wow, that is a holding. I'll tell you. Okay. I thought that was, I'll tell you, he took a hit like you can't believe when he released that football. Gerard, number 60. So the Bears will get backed up to their own six-yard line. First and 16. Fuller out of the gun. Rosenbauer standing a yard deep in the end zone behind him. Three receivers right on first and 16. Fuller's going to pass from his own end zone. Set up the screen to Rosenbauer. He bobbles it, oh. and it's nearly picked off. Woo! Oh, my what goodness What a break gracious. there for the Brown Bears is... Seth Rosenbauer does the juggling act as that ball's bouncing around his hands at about the five yard line and his URI conversion almost picks it off. Boy, the Bears are attempting fate with the way they're handling the football. One, two, three, four times on his hands. Rosenbauer, I think, trying to turn up field before he had possession yep. of the football there and he could never quite bring it in. Second down 16, Brown, from their own six. Fuller with three receivers right. Rosenbauer remains in a tailback behind him. They're going to hand it to him this time up the middle. And Rosie's going to dive forward out to the eight, maybe to the nine-yard line. Well, this is a third down where, you know, we talk about different positions of the field. This is where you really have to protect the football. And this is where Marcus has got to be patient. If his guy is not open, he cannot force a ball here for a turnover. He's going to have to release it or eat it and, you know, make the smart decision and punt away because you're up. 20-7 to seven here. Right. And there's no need to turn the football over down in this zone. Third down, 13 for the Bears from their own nine. Strahan splits out to the far side left. Doles and Jetty to the near side right. Rosenbauer the tailback to the left of Marcus Fuller. Fuller on third and long, back to pass. Steps up, fires middle of the field, and Jetty makes the catch out of the 26-yard line. It's a Brown first down. Another diving grab for Alex Jetty. Nice job by the offensive line, though. They had a nice pocket. And Fuller stood right in it, and bang, he hits Jetty right over the middle. Fuller passes quickly to Jetty, and Jetty on the catch and run takes it out to the 33-yard line as he picks up seven more. Go Jetty right, won't go down. No, they go right to that hurry-up offense, which I've liked today. It's been really taking uh, URI off of their game a little bit because when you go to a hurry-up offense, the defensive coordinators can't uh, get the defensive plays in another penalty. This quarter's yeah. become tremendously penalty orientated here on both sides and that's going to go on the Bears uh, they're saying illegal motion well they went to that hurry up offense and I don't think everybody was set yeah so that will negate a nice pickup on first down of seven or eight yards you know again Phil Estes has told his kids he says listen we have the chance to be real good we got to cut out the mistakes. Yeah. And right now, the mistakes are hurting this team. A fumble led to Rhode Island's only score of the game, and some penalties here hurting them on this drive as well. First and 15 for Brown. They have it at their own 21 yard line. Fuller now with one receiver left, two receivers right. Rosenbauer gets the handoff running left, and Rosie takes it out across the 22 yard line to the 23. He picks up a couple of the yards on the carry. Yeah, there was nothing there on the left hand side for Rosenbauer. He was uh, stuffed right up immediately. But you're right, though, that Scott, it's just, you know, handling that, that, that football is so important here, not making those mistakes. Second down, 13 for Brown from the 23. Fuller backs up out of the gun, two receivers to either side, to his left and to his right. Marcus back to pass, steps up in the pocket, now rolls right. Marcus looking, fires it downfield for Strahan, who can't make the leaping grab at the 40 yard line. He had two Ram defenders behind him. And as soon as the ball hit his hands, he got a shove in the back from that defender, which did not allow him to pull the ball in. No, he didn't. Good, uh, good move by Marcus. So he's flushed out of the pocket. He's running to the sideline, throws the ball on the run. Nice throw on the run. It's hard to throw the football on the run. And, you know, Strahan had to go up for it. Yeah, so that ball was a little, a little lower. Strahan probably would have had it. But yeah, he right, Marcus, that's a tough throw on the run. And it was a little high. And Strahan was so outstretched that once he felt those hands in the back, it was tough to hang on to the ball. 
third and 13 for the Bears from their own 23. Fuller backs up into the gun again. Two receivers right, one left. Takes a snap, back to pass. Now he fires down the left side for Strahan. Jump ball is incomplete. I like that action there. As Strahan did a little down and out, and Fuller got into there and gave a signal like go, like down and out and go. And then, then he started to go, and he tried to because he saw he had the guy out there on one-on-one -on -one coverage. Just wasn't able to make the completion, but uh, nice call there by Marcus. So now Grant Senny and the punting unit will come onto the field to kick the ball away. Rams will stand to get some pretty good field position out of this on fourth and 13 from the 23-yard line of Brown. Senny on to kick it, averaging just, oh, high snap. Senny goes back to the five, picks it up and gets oh, hit. No. And Rhode Island's going to take over at the two. Mistakes continue to plague the Bears. This has been a mistake uh, second quarter. First quarter was mistake free. The second quarter, it's been a lot of mistakes. And that's a tough snap up over his head. I mean, he had nowhere to go. I mean, you're down inside. I mean, that, that snap has got to be sure. It's got to be money on the money over his head. First and goal to go for Rhode Island. They have it at the Brown three yard line. Brown mistakes keeping the Rams in this football game. This happened in week one against Bryant. And it's happening again here tonight against the Rams. First and goal to go for the Rams, Miraz. Hands it to Cooper running right and he'll go into the end zone untouched. Touchdown, Rhode Island. Uh, Cooper gets that corner. URI seals that corner, and you're right, Scott. There was no one within 15 yards of him. Easy sweep to the right-hand side for a touchdown, but that was a that was a, a gift to URI, really just a gift. It's a special teams gift. Mistakes, oh. mistakes, mistakes, hurting the cause again. It happened in Week One against Bryant, and the mistakes again, hurting the Bears here. Now the point after attempt to try to make it a six point game. The kick is up and it is good from Rohrwasser. And it's now Brown 20 and Rhode Island 14. 409 to go in the first half from Learfield Sports. This is Brown Bears football. McHugh approaches the ball, gets his leg into it. High end over end kick, backing Doles up inside the five. And Troy takes it across the 5 to the 10 to the 15-yard line. Doles out of the 20-yard line, and he drives forward to the 22. Not sure why Troy Doles <laughs> hesitated there. A little action he there. He caught I think it, and I he think looked he at the official. <laughs> I'm not quite sure what that was about. I almost thought he thought he might have been in the end zone should he right. uh, uh, kneel himself down. But, uh, you know, this is going to be an important series for our offense here. This is only a six-point game now. We were up here 20 to 7. Like you said, we're letting this team hang around. We dominated them in the first quarter with 220 yards on their 37. So this offense now with 359 has got to put some sort of sustainable drive, put some points here to go into half. Well, you're right, because Rhode Island gets the ball to start the second exactly. half. They deferred their choice to receive the football in the third quarter. First and 10 for the Bears. This drive starts at their 22. Fake the handoff. Fuller back to pass, fires across the middle to Strahan, who makes a tough catch in traffic out at the 34-yard line. It is a first down for the Bears, pickup of 12 on the pass to Brian Strahan. And Strahan right now is up at 86 yards, receiving on eight catches here in the first half. He's been the money man inside, and I mean, he takes a hit there and is able to hold on to the football, but Marcus gunned right down on him. He saw him from the shotgun. He hung into the, into the pocket. I mean, a nice low pass. First and 10, Brown from their own 34. Fuller out of the shotgun, two receivers left, one receiver right. Koch is the tailback. He shifts to the right side of Fuller in the backfield. Fuller sends a receiver in motion, hands it to him. It's Troy Doles running to the short side of the field, and Doles cuts it up across the 40, and he's run out of bounds just short of the 45-yard line. That was a great block, though, by Strahan there to break that on this one, and a great call by Marcus as Marcus was audibling that call at the line of scrimmage. Nice job by the senior captain. Nine-yard run for Troy Doles. Makes it second and one for the Bears at their own 44-yard line. Check that 43. Three receivers left. Fuller has Coke standing to his right. Marcus is going to pass on second and short. Now he rolls right, and he fires the ball downfield and just throws it away incomplete. You know, that's a smart pass, though, by Fuller. He's on the run. He takes a hit. He's getting up a little bit slow, holding on to that arm, but he throws it out of bounds right there. Does not force the football, because the worst thing you can do here is turn the football over and let this Brown, uh, I mean, this URI team get back out on the field. 
Clock stops with 3.14 to go in the first half. Brown 20, Rhode Island 14. It'll be third down and one for the Bears from their own 43-yard line. Bears tonight on third down are five of nine at 56%. Buke at the tight end motions, now sets back on the right side. Handoff goes up the middle to Coke, and Coke is gonna be stopped yeah. short of the first down. Oh, it's gonna be real close. No, I'll he's short. Scott, yeah, it's gonna be just short, but it's gonna be very, very close. I thought he was gonna get it, and he just got stuffed up by a URI defender. He's looking for the call, but they're gonna do a measurement here, maybe. Is that close? Yep. I think they are gonna bring the chains it, out. I think he might have got a, look, a little bit of a nice spot there because it was a forward progress when he got hit, but it's I gonna still, be close. I still think from our vantage point, he's gonna be maybe half the length to the length of a football shy of the first down. He needed to gain the 44, and it looks like that football is shy of the 44-yard line. They're bringing the chains across the field from the Rhode Island sideline with 2.52 to go until halftime, and Brown on top by six, 20 to 14. We'll see when they stretch the chains, but my inkling is it's gonna be fourth and inches. And it will be. By the length of a football, the Bears are short of a first down. You come up here and you try to make a hard count, see if you can draw them off sides here, then call, then call a timeout right before oh, they've got 252. Grant, they've got Grant Senny coming onto the field. Maybe get them off sides. I might go quarterback sneak with Fuller like he did mm. before. Run the offense out onto the field and sneak it. It would be a risky call, but looks like right now the Bears will be content to punt the football away with 2.52 to go until halftime. They have the punting unit on the field. It will be fourth and inches. The thing is, if you did, if you did lose it here, the momentum change would be huge if you didn't get that first down. Well, if Rhode Island scores before <laughs> halftime, they're going to take all the momentum into the locker room and knowing they're getting the football to start the second half. So Bears defense... Going to need to come up with a stop here. First things first, though, Bears need a good snap and a good punt here. Buca, low snap. Senny picks it up, gets his leg into this one, and he shanks it off the right side of his foot. That's going to be a short punt. That's a tough punt right there. Low snap off the side of his foot, shanks it. Just not well executed at all here. The special teams for the Brown Bears struggling here in this second quarter. Bears special teams just not getting it done. Too many mistakes. You know, football is a game now. It's not just about your offense and your defense. Your special teams are a very big part of winning and losing in football today, a huge part of it. It's a complete team effort. The Bears have got to get these special teams things right at halftime. First and 10 for the Rams. They're going to start this drive at their own 42 with 2.39 to go until halftime. They have two timeouts remaining. Brown leads at 20 to 14. Mraz out of the shotgun, back to pass. Looks, looks, fires downfield, has a man, it's complete. Denny makes the catch down to the Bears, 37 yard line. Too much time, no pressure on the quarterback. Mraz, he had too much time to set up. He's able to find an open receiver. I mean, you gotta go that 1,001, 1,002, 1,003, and you gotta be in a guy's face, or at least your hands are up and no one's near him. First and 10 for the Rams at the Brown, 37. Mraz out of the shotgun. Bears jump, get back on side. Mraz back to pass, fires it, and is it caught or incomplete? No, they Big say goal. the catch was made wow. on the far side of the field by Beauvais. Beauvais makes a great catch there as Will Quigley is all over him. Low pass down around his knees to the far side of the field to URI side, and he's able to pull it in as Quigley was right down there with him. First and 10 for Rhode Island. They're at the Bears 26 as we get set to go into two minutes here in the second quarter. 20 to 14 Brown, but the Rams are threatening to change that before halftime. Mraz backs up into the shotgun, two receivers to his left and one to his right. Mraz takes the snap, back to pass, steps up in the pocket, running, and he's gonna take it inside the 20, sliding down at about the 17 yard line of the Bears, a yard shy of a first down. That's what happens, you had good coverage downfield. There were man-to-man, -man. Brown was. Opens up a little bit of a pocket on the inside. Mirage sees it and just scampers down to basically a second and two. Linebackers are supposed to pick that up, but they had good coverage. 
Second down and one for Rhode Island. They have it at the Brown 17. Mraz backs up into the gun. Anderson stands to his right of the backfield. Clock down to 105 to play until halftime. Mraz takes a snap. He's going to pass. Fires it across the middle. Incomplete. Oh, what a hit. The intended receiver was Denny, but Gillen hit him. The free safety senior, Zach Gillen, comes up and wallops him. Well, that would have been a complete pass down inside the 10. What a hit. So now it'll be third down and one for the Rams from the Bears' 17-yard line. You talk about huge plays in a football game. This this will be one we'll talk about, third and one here. I got to believe they're going to run it here because they have two timeouts remaining and 56 seconds to go. Let's see if they give it to Anderson. Oh, Anderson oh. moved. Wow. It's going to be a false start. Now they're going to probably have to pass it. Huge break for the Brown Bears, but the Brown Bears came up with basically nine men up on the box, up on the line, showing blitz. Two cornerbacks out only, and he moved when everybody came forward. So Anderson got caught leaning a little bit, and the false oh. start will back the Rams up five and bring it, bring up third down six. Big break for the Brown Bears here. So they back Rhode Island up to the Brown 22-yard line with 56 seconds to go until halftime. Third down six for the Rams. Rhode Island one for five at 20% on third down tonight. Anderson remains in a tailback, and now Jim Fleming wants to call a timeout. We'll take one, too, with 56 seconds to go until halftime. Brown 20, Rhode Island 14. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football field. Again, they're one of five on third down tonight. Mraz, 6 of 15, passing for 103 yards. No touchdowns, one interception. He will likely throw it here on third and six. Mraz, out of the gun. Back to pass, looks left, fires left, and it is incomplete. Ferguson with a good coverage on Beauvais, and the Rams are going to bring their field goal unit on. So it's good stop for the Bears defense. It was an interesting call that they came out with the same lineup. They had all the receivers in tight except for Beauvais out here on one-on-one -on -one coverage to the near side here against Ferguson. So, I mean, his only option was going to be that. I mean, I, I didn't see really that play to, to call right. that timeout right there. So fourth and six, and now it'll be a field goal attempt of 39 yards from the right hash mark, angle to the left for Rohrwasser, who's two for two, as long as 33 this season. The kick is up, it's on the way, and the kick is no good. Both kickers are having a problem today. Well, there's and some I, wind up there. I think that wind is swirling as Senny has missed his, and now URI misses their chance to put some points on the board. So with 45 seconds to go until halftime, the Bears dodge a bullet. And up. they keep that six-point lead, 20-14, to 14, over the Rams. Scott, they dodge a big bullet right there. I mean, you, you know, we talk about it. 20 to 14, you're letting this team hang around. And I'll tell you, this second quarter, we're going to talk about it. That first, that first quarter was lights out. Yeah. The second quarter, sloppy. Both sides. Just got to cut the mistakes out. Yeah. I, I, you just don't know how else to say That's it. This it. is three weeks in a row. Mistakes, turnovers, bad snaps. You got you to gotta eliminate it. If yep. you can't eliminate it, bad things are going to continue to happen. And you're going to keep the other team in the game yep. after you've executed such a great first quarter. First and 10, Brown. Handed off to Rosenbauer running left, and Rosenbauer takes it toward the Rhode Island sideline out to about the 28-yard line. Or a pickup of almost five on the carry for Rosenbauer. Pickup of about six yards six. on the carry for Seth. They're going to let this thing just wind right down, I think, and just yeah. go in and say, hey, we're up 2014. Let's not turn the football over. Let's not do anything crazy here. So the Bears will take a six-point lead into the halftime locker room. It is 20-14 to 14 Brown leading URI. We'll take a break, and when we come back, our Brown Bears halftime show from Brown Stadium. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. All until the second half, so they'll get the ball to start the third quarter as Senny has it teed up at the 35-yard line, set to kick it deep to Robbie Delgado and Harold Cooper. High end over end kick, and Delgado is going to give way to Cooper, who takes it at the three. Across the five to the 10 to the 15 yard line. Cooper hit, but he bounces out of it to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, 40, across midfield, into Brown territory. Cooper tackled all the way down at the 30 yard line of the Bears. Tackle made by number four, Andrew Cope. One of the guys that went into uh, the office this week and told his coach, put me out on special teams, I can help you.
But Scott, we left uh, that second quarter and it was special teams that had been hurting this football team in that first half. And wow, they didn't do any help thing to help us here. And this, this 100 uh, game is wide open here. Look at that great field position for the Rams after the big kick return by Cooper. They have it first and 10 and they are at the Brown 30 yard line. <clears throat> Mraz out of the shotgun has Delgado standing to his left. He's gonna pass and he fires it across the middle and he threw it behind his intended receiver, Denny. Denny was why it was open right there. Look, as you're right, it was behind him. But Roz has not been accurate here today. I mean, uh, he's really kind of thrown behind his receivers, on top of his receivers. He's made some great passes too, but uh, Brown Bears have dodged some bullet here. Well, on that pass, he was open. Kiari Denny had the pass thrown a little bit behind him. Brings up second down and 10 Rams at the Brown 30 yard line. Bears showing blitz, here they come. They're gonna hand it off to Delgado and Kutsky meets him at the line of scrimmage and drives him back. Kutsky makes a big hit right there. Comes off, gets underneath his lineman, sheds him and comes in and makes a big, big hit. Followed up with Robbie Hughes coming in over the top. And another third down here for URI is, URI's got another third down, tough, tough third down right here for them. Third down and 10, they have it at just outside the Brown 30 yard line. Delgado runs out of the huddle as they bring an extra receiver in. Let's see what the Rams do here on third down. Clearly a passing down, they send three receivers left and one to the right. Staying in the backfield is Harold Cooper who motions out of the backfield. They try to throw it to him. Instead, Mraz wants to run it and he's got the first down inside the 20, at the 15, inside the 10 and he's run out of bounds at about the eight yard line of Brown. Tough break there for the Brown Bear defense because they had tremendous pressure. The pocket broke down. He was, they were all over and Mraz was able to find his way out of that broken down pocket. Linebackers could not get off of their receivers. They got blocked downfield and that was just a great play by URI downfield for the blocking, and now all of a sudden, URI's knocking on the door. It's first and goal to go for the Rams. They have it at the Brown nine yard line. Mraz sends one receiver left and one receiver right. Mraz out of the gun. He's gonna hand the ball up to Cooper. Cooper takes it down to the five yard line. You know, it's tough when you put your defense in a tough position, like we just did just then. And all of a sudden, the URI team is banking on the door because they, they want to get a shot at this cup as well. And we're happy to be joined in the booth by Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo. Gina, Scott Credici, John Anderson, Good thank night. you for stopping up and joining us. Happy to be here, Scott. It's a great night for football. It certainly is. Right now, the Rams have it second down goal to go at the Bears' five-yard line. Mraz handed off again to Cooper running right, and a great job there as Robbie. Cooper is stopped short. At the six yard line, Robbie Hughes made the tackle. Robbie Hughes, great family here. His brother Peter played here. His grandfather, Gordon Perry, one of the honorary captains for the class of 55. But it was Robbie Hughes from New Jersey who comes up and makes a nice tackle on Cooper. Well, Governor Imondo, it was uh, a great afternoon Thursday at the State House having that, uh, hosting that press conference for this Governor's Cup rivalry. Thank you so much for having us. It really, no. really kicked off the uh, weekend for us. I was happy to. They ha we had a lot of fun. And these guys have been practicing hard, getting ready for this all week. No doubt about it. Looks like the Rams are going to call a timeout, and that'll give us more time to talk to Rhode Island Governor Gina Raimondo, who's been on the job for about a year now. Yeah. And almost, uh, nine, yeah. almost 10 months. Cur yeah. Curious to get your impressions. How have things gone? Has it been everything you expected? And Did more. And more. And more. <laughs> no, it's been great. You know, there's a lot of work to do. No shortage yeah. of challenges. But right firing right and it is incomplete so the Rams will probably bring their field goal unit onto the field and here they come once again the Brown Bears here are, uh, bend on defense but don't break and don't let up the six points here so to get away here with three points right now at this point in the game Scott it's gonna be huge for this defense Justin Rohrwasser missed his last field goal attempt before halftime this one however will be a chip shot from 23 yards and the right hash mark, so the kick will be angled to his left. Out of the hold of Colt Peavy. A good snap, the hold is down. Rohrwasser's kick is up, it is on the way, and it is good. So with 12 minutes, 10 seconds to go in the third quarter, the Rams cut it to a three-point deficit. It's Brown 20 
in Rhode Island 17. Well, you're no, on the Brown Radio broadcast, broadcast here. Uh, and, and no, be no, who, who, for the Rams, Vince, Governor I am Ramon. the governor of Rhode Island, <laughs> and this is our state <laughs> university. I understand. Yeah, no, we I'm, understand. I'm for all the boys to play as well as they can. Yeah, that was a it. good kick. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to know, do, do, do your kids uh, have their Brown T-shirts sure, on? So. They do, but it's a little chilly, so okay. they have to cover them up. And they love those T-shirts. Oh, very good. Kids. Very good, and and, yeah. and the, our team logo, on uh, our team saying this year is Carpe Diem, seize the day. That's kind of the theme thing. of the season. <laughs> Got to live that way. So, Good game, though. Close. It is a good game. Very competitive, and you'll be on the field handing the Governor's Cup to the winner tonight? I will be, absolutely. Terrific. We hope that's for the Brown Bears so it doesn't have to leave the east side. <laughs> 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 I have to plug for our team. I, you know? love, it. I love it, as you should. <laughs> well, the Governor's our neighbor here. She resides <laughs> on the east side. I, I walk here from there you go. Oh, that's, yeah. yeah. There you go. I don't have a niece who's a sophomore at Brown. Oh, really? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, my brother's great. two kids on here, so I is love it. it. Yeah, I have a girl's daughter who's a sophomore here. Wow. Oh, wow. So I'll have to ask my daughter. There's a kick by McHugh, end over end. Doles is going to take it at the 2, across the 5 to the 10 to the 15, near side 20. 25-yard oh. line, 30. Doles at the 35-yard line. Cuts it up at the 40, and he's knocked out of bounds across the 40-yard line. Nice return there by Troy Doles. Will give the Bears offense good field position. They'll start this drive at their own 42-yard line. Scott, that was another one of those seniors who went in last Sunday after that, that beating by Harvard and said to the coach, hey, coach, put me on special teams. I want to help this team win some football games so they took the freshman out put Doles in there as that senior wide out and look what he's done he's put this offense in a great position here so governor Raimondo you got a, a taste of coach Estes's humor at the press conference yeah. as uh, uh, he said uh, they did a study of Harvard grads who said if they had to do it all over again they'd attend Brown they'd be more happy that way <laughs> I know. a very oh. flawed study I might oh. add very flawed <laughs> There's a handoff to Rosenbauer, and Rosie takes it out near midfield. A pickup of eight, and he fumbled, fumbled the football. Oh, no. And who came up with it? Rhode Island did. They're going to call him down. Let's see. The officials come in. I think they're going to say his knee was down before the ball came out. Yes, the official is signaling second down, so the Bears will maintain possession. That was a break there for the Brown Bears. As we said at halftime, we've got to be able to control the football and take care of the football. That would have been a tough one. But, Governor, I have to say, in our first night game here in 2010, I don't know if you were here because we played Harvard. I, I was here. Was yeah, fantastic. my son played for Brown, and he started that game, and we did win. We beat yeah, Harvard I remember. that game. You remember, remember that game? The excitement here. We had like 20,000 people here. And it was hot. Yes. It, was a it was a warm yeah. September yeah. night. It was fantastic. I love the night games. Second down and two. Hand off to oh. Pena. Fumbles it, and Fuller falls back on it. Mistakes continue to plague the Bears. The mental mistakes have hurt us all season. It hurt us at Bryant. It hurt us up at Harvard last week. And we continue here as we start this second half. That first quarter, we were lights out. In the second quarter, we declined. And now all of a sudden here, once again, we're dropping the football. And football's a game of physical, but we can't make the mental mistakes in football. So now, will your children follow in your footsteps? Will they go to De La Salle and then La Salle? Or what's what's the plan? I think so. Yeah. See, this is Cece. She's already out De La Salle in sixth grade. Oh, terrific. Yeah. There we All go. right. She's got her fleece on, so hopefully she'll be a Ram. Third and nine. Fuller's pass complete, nice. and that's a first down catch to Strahan inside Rhode Island territory down to the Ram 47 yard line. Nice job by Brian Strahan, the senior, does a nice down and in. Marcus Fuller throws a nice pass to him as well. Bears right back up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from the Rhode Island 47 yard line. Fuller with two receivers left, two receivers right. He operates out of the gun, back to pass. Looks right. Now he's going to step up and run with it, and he's got some room, and he takes it down inside the 40, down to the 39-yard line of Rhode Island. Nice gain by Fuller there on first down. So, you know, Governor, just in closing, I want to echo what you said to start the interview. I, I, I think it's great. You know, I, I know Rhode Island was one of the first states into the recession and one of the last states out, but things really are looking up. Things appear to be a lot better. The economy, people are back to work in the state, and that's a great thing. Ooh, it is a great thing. Yeah. It's a great thing. People are optimistic. I'm optimistic. We have a lot of good programs going. We're, we're taking action, and I think things are looking up for sure. Well, thank That's you so great. much for joining us in the booth, and once again, thanks for having us at the State House Thursday, and we look forward to seeing you presenting that cup after the game. I'll be out there. Yep, thank Governor, you. thank you so thank much. You guys. Yep. It was fun. Thank, right. thank you. Thank you. Governor Gina Raimondo, the governor of the state of Rhode Island, she will present the Governor's thank Cup you. to the winner of tonight's football thank game thank you. down thank you. on the field here at Brown Stadium. Right now, third down and two for the Bears. They have it at the Rams' 39-yard line. Fuller 
out of the shotgun. Handed to Pena, and Pena stopped cold. Oh, that's a behind tough Behind the line of down, scrimmage. Scott, tough third down there. Behind the line of scrimmage. Third down, we're in four down territory possibly here, Scott. But now it's fourth and five instead of fourth and inches. The URI sideline erupted there because that was a big stop for their defense. Real big stop for their defense. Credit to the Rhode Island defensive front. They just broke through to make that tackle. This is going to be important right here. We talk about special teams winning and losing football games. This snap is crucial. And so now it'll be fourth down and five, and Grant Senny on to punt the football away, trying to pin the Rams deep in their own territory. The snap from Oliver Buca. It's a good snap. Senny gets his leg into it. High punt. Fair catch called for, and they let it bounce, and it's picked oh, up. Picked oh, he up. can't run with it. He, he called for the fair catch. That should be a penalty. penalty. Why is there no flag down? Referee was right there. He's going to call that. I agree with you, Scott. He ran with the football. You can't do that. Maybe once it bounces on the turf, that negates the fair catch. I don't know. Crazy. Well, hey, URI's in a tough spot right here. They're on their own eight-yard line. Here's a good chance for this Brown defense to really go three and out and put this offense in some good position. Because I'll tell you, we got a ton of football left. Everyone's vying for this cup, and it's a 2017 football game. 9-10 to go, third quarter. Bears clinging to a three-point lead, and the Ram offense operating from the shadows of its own goalpost. Miraz out of the gun, fakes the handoff, rolling left, looking to pass, fires across the middle, has Bove complete, and Bove has a first down out to the 20-yard line. Nice. Hey, Bove's had himself a nice evening, hasn't he? He has, as we talked about him. He's the local kid here. He's Marvin Bove. He's done a great job for URI at that wideout position. Nice tackle there by Will Quigley, though, as Bove weaved and darted across. Uh, the referee got a little bit shaken up there yeah. on that play because Bove kind of cut across the middle of the field. And when you do that, a lot of guys are flying. And that line judge that's right there in the middle where the linebackers are, he took a little bit of a hit there in the back, and uh, he's slow getting up. Timeout on the field to attend to the injured official. We'll take one, too, with a score of Brown 20, Rhode Island 17, and 20, Rhode Island 17. Under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. Mraz out of the shotgun, takes a snap. He hands it off right up the middle. The ball carrier is T.J. Anderson, and Anderson takes it out of the 22-yard line for a two-yard pickup on first down. He was met immediately by number 42, the middle linebacker there. Brandon the Davenport. Davenport comes up, and he gets inside the gap and makes a nice big hit. That's called filling the honey hole. Yeah. That's what those middle linebackers have to do. Second down and eight for the Rams from their own 22-yard line. Mraz with two receivers left. Bears crowd the line of scrimmage. Now they back out of it. Mraz fires it and has a man complete for a first down out to the 32-yard line. The catch is made by D.J. Stewart. Seems like Brown's going into this, like, defense that's kind of soft with their cornerbacks, wouldn't you say? I mean, they're kind of laying off a little bit there, giving those receivers that 10-yard easy pass. First and 10 for Rhode Island, so they... Move the ball out of the shadows of their own goalpost. This drive started inside the 10 at about the 8-yard line, and now here they are out first and 10 at their own 32. Two receivers split out to the far side right, and the tight end Holmes lines up to the near side left along with the tight end McKeenan. Cooper is the tailback. First down, Mraz to pass. Fires it right side, and it is incomplete. He and his receiver, Padre White, weren't on the same page. White kind of broke off the route at about the 48-yard line, and Mraz threw it deep like he was running a jet. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He thought he was going to do a jet. He came down and out, and basically, he didn't even, Mraz didn't even know he was doing a down and out, just kind of threw it down the football field. No one was there. Definitely a miscue, for sure. So it'll be second down and 10 for the Rams from their own 32-yard line. Seven and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Brown 20, Rhode Island 17. Receiver splits out to the far side right. They go strong formation left, and they run it left to the short side of the field. Cooper cuts it up, and he's got some running room. And he's going to cross midfield into Brown territory. Cooper tackled all the way down inside the 40-yard line of the Bears. Wow. Dovey, Sebastian Dovey saves a touchdown. Number 20 for the Brown Bears. That's Cooper, the elusive Cooper, as we talked about at the top of the show. I thought he was behind the line of scrimmage for a loss, and he's able to bob and weave. He finds himself out into the secondary, and then all of a sudden he misses some tackles, and he's off to the races. 
So the Rams on the move with seven minutes to go in the third. They've trailed all game long. They could possibly take their first lead of the game on this drive. First and 10 for the Brown 38. Mirage back to pass, plenty of time. Let's it go underneath, and it is incomplete. Intended for Nathan Holmes, went right off his hands. Yeah, Holmes was wide open, a little down and in, five yards, comes right along the line of scrimmage underneath the linebackers, and really just basically doesn't watch it into his hands. He's running up the field before he catches the football. Incomplete pass will bring up second down and 10 for Rhode Island at the Brown 38-yard line. 6.48 to go third quarter, and the Bears cling to a three-point lead. Rhode Island breaks the huddle. They send one receiver to the near side left, and they go with that strong formation now to the yep. right side, and they're going to hand it off again. Same play, Cooper to the right, and Cooper cuts it up, and he's got some running room, and he may have another Ram first down. They're running to the boundary, which is the short side of the field, and they're having a lot of success with that formation. There's no question about it. They're going to the short side of the field, but they could. Uh, Brown in a different uh, motion. Their defensive backs weren't set. They weren't really sure where their call was coming from. And then he goes to the right-hand side, and he misses two tackles. Two Brown defenders had a chance to tackle him. One behind the line of scrimmage, one about five yards down. He's able to get by them and pick up the first down. Almost get the sense his Bears defense yes. might be tiring out well, a little bit, having trouble keeping up with Harold Cooper. First and 10, Rams at the Brown 25-yard line. Maraz will pass on first down. Fires it, complete to Bove inside the 20. Tackled at the 17-yard line. Dovey there, and Williams make the tackle. Brown Bears are going to come up with a huge play right here. They're going to have someone's got to come up with something going here to stop this URI offense. It seems to be getting into a groove right now, really. And they picked up almost eight on that first down catch by Bove. The Cranston East product. Second down and two. They have it. Just outside the 17-yard line of the Bears. Beauvais split out to the far side right now. And they're going to hand it off this time to Coop. Uh, check that. That's number 41, T.J. Anderson. And he's got a first down to the Brown 13-yard line. Anderson comes over to this left side. Davenport makes the tackle, but the tackle's a little too late. He's able to pick up the first down, as you just mentioned, Scott. Now it's first and 10. Geez, the 14-yard line. They are really driving down the football right here. The Bears have got to come up with a big play. Five and a half minutes to go, third quarter. Bears with a three-point lead, but the Rams looking to change that here. First and 10, Rhode Island at the Brown 13-yard line. Mraz takes a snap, fakes the handoff, back to pass. Looking to the end zone, firing to the end zone. Caught, touchdown, Rhode Island. He was wide open coming across Fogre the middle. Fogre White. Fogre White gets a nice job. He gets inside of uh, Gillen. We had six guys on the line of scrimmage trying to get some pressure on Mauvais. We can't get up the field. We can't get a hand on him. He's able to complete a pass. And the Rams with their first lead of the game and now with a point after attempt can go up by four. And uh, you look at that miss point after attempt by the Bears, you look at the missed field goal and all of a sudden they find themselves in a situation where they're gonna be down four here. Still a lot of time left. Snap hold is down, the point after attempt is on the way and it is good. 5-12 to go and it is now Rhode Island 24 and Brown 20. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. And now the ball teed up at the 35-yard line as the Rams get set to kick it away to the Bears. McHugh approaches the football, gets his leg into it, short end over end kick. They don't want to return by one of the Bears' deep men, so the Bears fall on it at the 24-yard line. Well, here's a chance for this offense. It's got to get itself on track here. I mean, now you're down by four. Plenty of football left, like you just mentioned, Scott, but we've got to get a sustainable drive We've got to keep that URI offense off the field right now. We've got to be mistake free and we've got to move the chains. We've got to eat some clock, move the chains, put some points on the board here. So it's first and 10 for the Brown offense, which finds itself trailing for the first time tonight. They'll take over at their own 24 yard line with five minutes and 10 seconds to go in the third quarter. Rhode Island 24, Brown 20. Fuller with Coke behind him has three receivers to the near side right. Fuller is out of the shotgun on first and 10 for the Brown 24-yard line. Marcus takes the snap, hands it to Andrew Koch. Koch running up the middle, and Koch takes it out across the 26 to the 27-yard line. So he picks up about three yards on the first down carry. Nice run by Andrew Koch on that left side. There wasn't much there, but he's such a tough runner. He was able to pick up about two yards after his initial hit. Bears up to the line of scrimmage, second and seven. 
from the 27 yard line. Fuller looks to his offensive coordinator Frank Sheehan for the play call. One receiver left, that's Jetty, two receivers right. Coke shifts to the right side of Marcus Fuller who operates out of the shotgun. Marcus back to pass, looks right, fires right, low pass, Strahan goes down and gets it at the 32 yard line. It's gonna be two yards shy of a first down. Yeah, it was a low pass, but a nice catch by Strahan. Way to get his hands down between the ball and the grass as he strides forward. Now it's third and two, and the Ram corners come up and play some press coverage here. Fuller airs it out, and it's caught for a first down by Jetty on the quick slant. Bears move the chains as Jetty got in front of Miles Holmes to make the catch. Nice catch by Jetty. He was able to get his body in front of Holmes. Not only that, extend his arms out. It was a whole hands catch right there. Be able to bring it back to his body. First and 10 for the Bears on their own 38-yard line. Fuller back to pass, looking, firing. Has Strahan again, who makes the catch out of the 43-yard line. That's a five-yard pickup on the catch by Brian Strahan. Strahan now at 105 yards receiving. That's his 11th catch of the night. Bears up to the line. Two receivers left, one receiver right. Fuller out of the gun, takes the snap, hands it to Johnny Pena. Pena drives forward, pulls his way out to the 48-yard line, and he's close to a first down. I think he's got it. Johnny Pena, I'll tell you, between the tackles, there's no one tougher. He just runs hard. He ran hard last week in the loss at Harvard, earning himself more playing time this week. High snap at the handoff to Pena again, and Pena drives forward into Rhode Island territory, and he takes it down to the 47-yard line of the Rams. He delivered the blow to the Rams right there. Two Ram tacklers come up to grab Johnny Pena, and he just delivers a blow, and he's able to get himself five yards. Five-yard pickup for Pena, second and five for the Bears at the 47-yard line of the Rams. Fuller's back to pass. Being blitz, Bears pick it up, complete to Doles. Doles first down, spins out of a tackle and takes it down inside the 41-yard line of Rhode Island. Nice job by Doles over the middle to make a nice catch. And then he's able to spin and pick up the first down. Troy Doles with 266 yards receiving coming into this game, and he is now up to about 70 yards receiving tonight. Rolling right, Fuller looking, looking, throwing to Strahan, and he makes the catch. No. no, they say he was out of bounds. They say his left foot was out of bounds. His left foot was out of bounds. Nice try by Strahan, though. Nice throw by Fuller, though, to protect the ball. They have to throw it low to this side of the field, but it looked like his foot was out of bounds from this side. Uh, tough to tell from that replay, but I guess his left toe may have been touching out of bounds before he made the catch. Second down, 10 Brown. They have it inside the Rhode Island 41-yard line. It's 2.41 to go in the third quarter, and the Bears trailing 24 to 20. Dole splits out to the far side. Uh, check that. Is that Swanky to the far side left? Dole's to the near side right. And Fuller out of the shotgun. Fakes the handoff to Pena. Back to pass. Fires it deep downfield. Doles has a step. Oh, oh, and he can't make the catch. Good defensive play made by Miles Holmes as he batted it away at the last second. Doles had him. He had a stride on him, got behind him. I thought Doles was going to pull that in. And, you know, Holmes just at the last second had good fundamentals as the cornerback. Saw that uh, Doles was going up for the football. He takes his hand up and bats it away. And so now it's going to be third down and 10 for the Bears at the 40-yard line of the Rams. Jetty and Swanky split out of the far side left. Brian Strahan to the near side right. Fuller backs up into the gun. Buke at the tight end lines up right. Fuller takes a snap, back to pass, rolling right, rolling, looking, looking. Now he wants to run it to the left. Fuller running left, fires it. Oh, oh and Swanky got hit hard, and the pass falls incomplete. He takes a knee on the near sideline, but he ran off the field all by himself under his own power, which is positive because he did take a really big hit. And now it's fourth and 10 for the Bears inside the 41 of Rhode Island. So Senny's going to try to pin the Rams deep once again. Good snap this time. Senny gets his leg into it. End over end kick. This time oh, the yeah. fair catch is called for and made at the seven yard line. It's a holding call. I saw it from up here. By Keynes. Yep. There would have been a blocked punt. And uh, Brown defender held the URI guy coming in. Or it would have been a blocked punt. I saw it right from here, Scott. I saw the guy pull the flag out. I saw the white jersey being almost ripped off of him. Well, honestly, that beats <laughs> the alternative of a blocked punt. I can yeah, tell you that. Well, that's what you got to do. But those are your choices. If the guy beats you, you gotta, you got to grab him. Can't have the blocked punt. So he, he did the right thing. No question the Rams will accept this penalty. They don't want to start at their own seven. So they'll make the, the Bears re-kick it, you would think. 
a game that has been statistically dominated by the Bears. The Rams lead at 24-20. Why? Because for the third straight game this season, Brown has made a lot of mistakes. Turnovers, muffed snaps, high snaps. Crucial mistakes. Yeah. And, 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 and bad, I, should, I don't know if the word correct word is bad, but at the wrong area of the field. Right. I mean, we've made mistakes in red zones, giving them great field position. I mean, just, you know, mistakes you just can't overcome. Yep. So they're going to take the 10-yard step off at the end of the penalty to take it out of the 17-yard line. That's what the Rams will do. They could have gone for the re-kick. Instead, they'll take it at the 17. That's interesting. Which is probably, you know, a good yeah. thing, I would say. Yeah, yeah I mean, Although the way, the, the way the Bears have had trouble with their punting <laughs> unit today. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, interesting. You know, we had a pump block last week against Harvard, too. Yeah. So you, you would have thought maybe they would have went for it. But they're up by four here, so. So Mraz and the Ram offense back out onto the field with a four-point lead, 24-20, 2.15 to go. Handoff up the middle. Cooper takes it across the 20 to the 22, and he picks up five yards on the first down carry. Cooper's done a great job for URI, you know, in the second quarter and into here into the third quarter. He, he's an elusive running back. We talked about him at the top of uh, the show. We got another Brown Bear down. 12 carries for Cooper and a total of 82 yards. He has a touchdown tonight as well. And it's like a defensive lineman we've yeah, got now. An injured Bear player. I'm not sure who that is. Is that Robbie Hughes? I'm not sure the number. I Second and five for Rhode Island from their own 22-yard line. Mraz out of the gun, two receivers to the near side left. Mraz takes the snap, back to pass. Looking, firing deep downfield, and McKeeman makes the catch out at the 47-yard line. The tight end, Charlie McKeeman, with a big first down catch. McKeeman's wide open, coming down, does a post to this side into the seam. We got another Brown Bear. And now bear. Connor Coughlin is the injured Brown Bear, as I think he took a shot to the helmet there. Well, he's the one who made the hit. He comes right. in, and he makes a big hit. Boom. Yeah, helmet with, to helmet. With his head down, and he's feeling it. Wow. This has just been a tough, tough couple of quarters for the Bears. The second quarter and now into the third. And with a minute 40 to go, Connor Coughlin stands up, and he's going to walk off the field under his own power. Jogs to the Brown sideline, so hopefully that is an encouraging sign. The result of the play is a first down for the Rams out to their own 47-yard line. The Rams always seem to have their back against the wall here in the second, in this third quarter, and then Mirage comes up with the big pass and is able to get himself out of trouble. Either the big pass or the big run, you know, that one play that gains him those 20, 25 yards. First and 10 for Rhode Island at their own 47-yard line. Mraz out of the shotgun. Takes the snap, hands it to Cooper. Cooper, a nice tackle there made by Will Twyman in the backfield. He loses a yard back to the 46. That was a great job by Will. He, he funnels right into the hole there very nicely, quickly. He's able to wrap up Cooper and take him to the, to the grass. Nice job. I thought he was going to get the handoff he was in there that quick. Second down, 11 for the Rams from their own 46. Bove splits out to the far side right, matched up on Quigley, and now what do we have? A false start on the Rams. That'll back them up five more and bring up second and 16. It's a good break for the Brown Bears right there. A nice five-yard penalty. Going to make it a long second down. They're going to have to get some pressure, though. They had not had many hits on Mraz at all today. They haven't really got to him. Two receivers split out to the far side right and one to the near side left. Mraz will operate out of the shotgun on second and 16 from the Rhode Island 41-yard line. Mraz takes the snap, back to pass. Now he steps up in the pocket, fires it underneath to Fadre White. White is going to be tackled from behind. Nice Good job. open field tackle there made by Number Herschel 30. Kaywood. Kaywood does a nice job right there, making a nice tackle. And it's going to bring up a third down for the Rams, third and eight from their own 49-yard line. 
Brown football brought to you by the Hotel Providence. Five seconds to go in the third quarter, and the Rams are going to let the time wind down. After three quarters of play from Brown Stadium, it's the Rody Rams 24 and the Brown Bears 20. Back with fourth quarter action in just a moment from Learfield Sports. This is Brown Bears football. Well, the first play of the fourth quarter, an incomplete pass from URI quarterback Paul Moraz, and it results in a nice third down stop of the Brown defense, and that'll bring the punting unit on for Rhode Island as Connor McHugh comes on to kick it away to Alex Jetty, who stands at his own 10-yard line to receive the McHugh punt. Good punt, and Jetty's going to make the catch at the 13-yard line where he's brought down right on the spot. Good special teams coverage there by Justin Hogan for Rhode Island. 14 minutes and 43 seconds to go fourth quarter. And the 100th renewal of this rivalry between Brown and URI, it's the Rams with a 24 to 20 lead. And now the Bears will take over on offense. I don't know why they spot the ball at the 11. Jetty clearly caught it with progress at the 13, but they're gonna push him back two yards from there and give it to him at the 11 yard line. First and 10, Brown. Rosenbauer, the tailback, standing behind full of the quarterback who operates out of the shotgun with two receivers to the right. And now the official stops play. A timeout's called by Brown. Scott Credici, John Anderson back at Brown Stadium. 14.43 to go fourth quarter. Bears trailing Rhodey 24 to 20. They signal the timeout for URI, but it was Brown calling the timeout. Their first timeout used here in the second half. First and 10 for the Bears from their own 11-yard line. Fuller out of the gun, takes the snap, low snap, and he hands it to Rosenbauer, running to the short side of the field, and Rosie's run out of bounds after a gain of only a yard to the 12. And again, the low snap kind of prevents the Bears from getting any type of good play going on offense. Yeah, I don't know how this snap thing has been uh, going this whole season, Scott. It's almost like an omen on us, really. The low snaps, the high snaps. Second and nine, Fuller back to pass, steps up, fires far side to Strahan. Strahan trying to make a man miss, but he can't. He's going to be tackled back at the original line of scrimmage for a loss of one. Nice job, though, by Strahan just to even get back to the line of scrimmage right there. This is a tough part of the field here right now, Scott, for the Brown Bears on a third down here. Everyone knows they're going to be throwing the football, and they've got to protect the football, and Marcus Fuller is going to do the right thing with the football here, and if no one's open, there's no need to turn the football over here and force a pass. Garrett Swanky comes back into the game for the Bears. He was injured in the third quarter, so that's good news for Brown. Swanky splits out of the right with Strahan. Jetty to the near side left. Rody jumps offside. Free play for the Bears. No, they're going to call the... No, that was not a false start. That oh. was not a false start. Now, maybe they're going to call encroachment and blow the play mm -hmm. dead, but I thought the Bears had a free play there. That should be five yards against the Rams. Yeah, I don't know why they blew that play dead. I don't either. That should have been a free play for Brown to see what they could come up with. Well, that's a big break, though, picking up five yards here. Third and five is a lot different than third and ten. When you're third and ten on your own 11, and now at least you're three, third and five from your own 15, gives you a lot more options. I like this short pass here, man, that the receivers right now, Scott, have got to know where the first down marker is. Third down and five for the Bears from their own 16-yard line. Two receivers left, one receiver, Strahan to the right. Fuller out of the shotgun on third and five. Takes the snap, back to pass. Looks for Strahan right side, and does Strahan make the catch? Wow, wow, what a first down catch. He was well covered on the play by Miles Holmes, who can't believe he made the catch. No, Holmes is jumping up. He's looking at the referee saying, what? He's got his hands out. You've got to believe. That's Strahan, he is steady. He's reliable, and he's going to make those great catches. First and 10, Brown at their own 23. Fuller back to pass again. Fires it down the field for Swanky, and Swanky can't make the catch. Well, that was tough coverage. Uh, that ball was kind of thrown in the air, kind of fluttered up there. Swanky had to stop and really kind of wait for the football, and two URI defenders, cornerback and safety, were able to come over the top and really kind of break that down. And yeah, Nash Jones, the strong safety, Broke up the play, second and 10. Hand off to Rosenbauer up the middle. Rosie with a big run and a first down, oh. tripped up at the 35-yard line. Gotta love Rosie right there. I mean, I thought he was gonna go to the house there. He was one, 
One player away, the safety has to come up and tackle him as he just goes right up the gut. Pick up a 12 for Rosenbauer, first and 10 at the Brown 35-yard line. Bears up to the line of scrimmage, Fuller takes the snap. Back to pass, looking near side for Jetty, makes the catch, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 43-yard line. It's a pickup of eight on the catch for Alex Jetty. Jetty does a nice job there coming to the sidelines and coming back to the football as he goes up and comes back. He makes a great catch here on the Brown sideline. Second and two for the Bears from their own 43-yard line. Fuller out of the gun, has Pena standing to his left. He passes, looking down the field, has Doles complete, and Doles inside a roadie territory, tackled at the Ram 36. Nice job by Doles right there to get open behind the cornerback, got in between him and the safety, and really was one player away from breaking it. They just got his ankles, and they had to strap them up around the ankles to bring him down. Good pump fake by Fuller there. And it's first and 10, Brown at the Ram 36. Fuller out of the gun, going to hand it to Pena. Johnny trying the left side, and Johnny driving forward, and he can only gain a yard at the 35-yard line. I like Johnny Pena, though. He only gained a yard, but a smart football player. He protected the football. He had one arm on it. As soon as the URI tackler started to come on top of him, he put his other hand around that football and was protecting it as he was going down. Second and nine for the Bears at the Rhode Island 35-yard line. Fuller with two receivers right, one receiver Strahan to the left. Fuller back to pass. Steps up, wants to run it. Running left, and he's going to run out of bounds at about the 30-yard line onto the Brown sideline. They'll spot him out of the 31 after a pickup of five yards. Good speed, foot speed there by Marcus Fuller. No one was open. He didn't try to force the football in into a receiver that was covered. Scampers here to the near sideline and picks up five yards. It's gonna bring up a third down and five for the Bears. They have it just outside the 30 yard line of Rhode Island. Fuller out of the gun, two receivers right, one receiver left, back to pass. Fires it to Rosenbauer out of the backfield and he tripped up and he fell down at the 27 yard line about a yard shy of the first down. That's too bad. Had he not lost his footing, Rosenbauer would have had a first down. He definitely would have had a first down. There was no one there. He lost his footing. And now the Bears up to the line of scrimmage. Fuller with the quarterback sneak, and he's going to pick up another first down. Good job by Marcus Fuller, his second quarterback sneak of the game for a first down. Great job. You're right. Right behind the hogs there. Yep. Hiley, Terry, Hall. I love it. Get up underneath them, push the pile. I don't know where they're marking this football. Yeah, it's a, like it's across the 26, and they're going to bring the chains out. But where the chains are situated, yeah. they're going to have it by about the length, maybe half the length to the length of a football. Yeah. I, I, if those right, chains on the far <laughs> side are accurate, those yard lines, you're right. and they should have the first down. It wasn't as favorable a spot as I thought they were going to get. I thought they were coming in, the side judges, and spotting it at the 25, but they put it just across the 26 toward the 25, and I still think that will be enough for a Brown first down. Let's see. The chain gang comes out, and they set the chains. They stretch them, and, yes, it is a first down by the length of a football. I'll yeah. tell you, you say you need to wear glasses. <laughs> you've been calling. That's two you've called from Listen, up here. Listen, my long distance <laughs> vision is fine. You put a piece of paper in front of my face, pal, and I need the reading glasses. You've nailed two of them. <laughs> what a call. I'll tell you, that was a huge fourth down, though. Uh, uh, you know, you talk about times in the football game. The clock's going to soon, you're going to be low 10 minutes here. Yep. You're going to become your enemy. And uh, I'll tell you, way to way to keep a drive alive. First and 10, Brown. They have it at the Rhode Island 26. Two receivers right. Strahan to the near side left. Fuller out of the gun with Rosenbauer behind him. Takes the snap. Hake fakes the handoff to Rosie, and he fires it as he is under pressure. That play hasn't worked. He does a fake uh, up the middle, and he kind of rolls out naked to the back side. But that end from URI isn't biting on the down run, and he's raiding Fuller's face. As soon as Fuller turns, He's got a defender in his face, so good play by Marcus just to throw it into the dirt. Yeah, Selwyn Nicholas was yeah. right there on top of him. Fuller had no choice but to get rid of the football. Second and 10, Fuller back to pass. Fires it to Jetty, and Jetty makes the catch and reaches forward to the 20-yard line for a pickup of six. I'll tell you, Alex Jetty, the local product uh, from right up the street here on 95, does a great job of extending his hands. What good, strong hands to pull that ball in over the middle with a defender on you. Third down, four for the Bears at the Rhode Island 20-yard line. Two receivers left, one receiver right. 
Fuller out of the gun, fakes the handoff, back to pass, looking to the deep corner of the end zone for Jetty, and it is batted down by Miles Holmes. The ball was slightly underthrown, giving Holmes a chance to go up and knock it down. Exactly right, Scott. Jetty had Holmes by about two steps in the back corner of the end zone, and Marcus just couldn't get the ball to that back corner, kind of got it caught up in the air, gave Holmes a chance to just backpedal and knock it down, because that was a little bit more of a strike, a little bit tougher, harder of a throw. He might have had Jetty open in the corner. And the Bears are going to go for it here on fourth down. They fire it, and it is caught. Is it a first down? Yes, yes. Jetty makes the catch at the 15-yard line. That's a great receiver, Alex Jetty. He knows where the first down marker is. You need to know. He does a down and in, gets inside the cornerback and makes a great catch and leaps himself to a first down. The Bears are four for five on fourth down tonight. First and 10 at the Rhode Island 15. Fuller back to pass, fires to Jetty. Wide receiver screen. Jetty takes it inside the 10, down to the eight yard line. Well executed right there. That Wide receiver screen as the linemen get out there. They got to pull themselves out there on that left-hand side. Dakota Gerard, Bruce Hall, they get out there. The big men do and do a good job downfield blocking. Second down and three. Bears have it at the Rams' eight-yard line. Brown trailing by four but looking to regain the lead. Handoff Rosenbauer cuts it up across the five. Rosie down to the four-yard line, and he's got a first down. Big first down right there for the Brown Bears. Side right. Fuller backs up into the shotgun on first and goal to go from the five with Rosie, the tailback, standing behind him. Fuller takes the snap, hands it to Rosenbauer. Rosenbauer pulls his way into the end zone. Touchdown, <coughs> Bears! Rosenbauer's legs were still moving as he was in the air over the top of the URI player. Rosie grinds out the touchdown. Big score there. Seth Rosenbauer just drives his way five yards into the end zone behind the Hogs, and the Bears regain the lead. It's 26-24 Brown, and look at that push there from Clay Eubank. Whoa, Eubank, I'll tell you, down low. Huge series for the Brown Bears. Zenny's point after attempt is on the way, and it is good. With 8.38 to go, it's Brown 27 and URI 24. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. neck issue or headache. Maybe it's a sore shoulder or pains or aches in your stomach. Ask your physician about Open MRI of New England. With six locations and non-claustrophobic open-sided machines, there isn't a more convenient option for your peace of mind. Open MRI of New England, the strongest open-sided scanners. The new generation Oasis system combines comfortable scanning with remarkable image quality. Together with advanced radiology, they provide CT, X-ray, ultrasound, and bone density testing. Visit OpenMRIofNE.com. Boy, you look at that replay, and what an effort by both Seth Rosenbauer and by junior right guard Clay Eubank. Eubank, who missed last season due to a torn ACL, is probably the strongest offensive lineman this team has, and he just bowled his way into the end zone, pushing Rosenbauer with him, and the Bears regain the lead 27-24. There's 8.38 to go here in the fourth quarter. Now, senny has got to kick the ball into a pretty stiff wind here. So the Rams probably gonna have decent field position. Now it's up to the Bears kick coverage team oh. to come up with some good coverage here. We need some good coverage here. We haven't had it the last two times down the field. So we're gonna have to look for one of these special kamikaze guys come up with a big tackle. And they kick it to the dangerous Cooper from his own eight, 10, 15 yard line, 20. Cooper on his feet, 25, gets the edge at the 30. At the 35 yard line, 40, cuts it across the field. 45, midfield, Cooper could go the distance. Only Dovey can catch him, and Dovey won't catch him. It's a touchdown for the Rams. <laughs> Special teams are a big part of football and a big part of a game, winning and losing and has not been on the side of the Brown Bears today as their special teams have just not looked good, Scott. You know, I was just going to say, if they can't cover them, kick it, pooch it to one of the up men. Don't kick it deep to that man. Yeah. I thought wow. the same thing. Wow. is right. He just dazzled his way down the field from one side to the other. That's a 93-yard kickoff return 
for Harold, Harold Cooper. And just like that, the Bears' three-point lead, gone. And now Rohde to try to go back up by four with 8.18 to go in the fourth quarter. The point after is on the way, and it is good. 8.18 to go in the fourth. And Cooper, with a 93-yard kickoff return for a touchdown, puts Rhode Island back on top of Brown, 31-27. He's got the wind at his back this time. Exciting football. McHugh is going to kick it deep. And he's going to back Doles up to his own four. Across the five to the 10, to the 15-yard line, Doles cuts it up at the 20. And Doles is going to be spun down right at the 20-yard line. And we have a penalty marker, two of them down on the play. Johnny Pena was mixing it up for Brown with number 49 for Rhode Island. And that is uh, Shane Nashawalski. You know, the, the Brown offense just came off really a very, very successful drive that was really kind of almost picture perfect. I mean, Marcus ran the offense very well. Blocking was there. So to come back out on the field there, I, you know, I feel very confident coming back here down by four, you know, with 8-11 to lift that this, this offense has showed a lot of resilience here today and done very well that they can drive down this field. Illegal block in the back by the Bears on the return. That'll back them up to their own nine-yard line. So they there's won't have great team, field position. But there's special teams, again, doing penalties. Spe I mean, it, special it, 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 teams, teams have really hurt yeah. Brown tonight, really hurt Brown in many areas. Yeah. Point after, field goal, oh. and punt Kick and kickoff yeah. coverage. It, it, <laughs> wow. First and 10 Brown, they have it at their own nine. Fuller out of the gun. Two receivers left, one receiver right. Rosie stands to his right of the backfield. Marcus takes the snap, he wants to pass, and he fires it out to Doles. Doles oh. makes a man miss, cuts it up at the 15, 20, 25 yard line, 30, 35 yard line, tackled from behind after a big gain. <laughs> Troy Doles takes it out to the 37 yard line, and Nass Jones made a touchdown saving tackle for the Rams. No question about that. I was ready to start running with Doles because I thought he was going to the house. Great job by Dolzo. Bears back up to the line of scrimmage. First and 10. They have it at their own 38-yard line, but trailing 31-27 with 7.50 to go in the fourth. Fuller back to pass. Looks, fires, looking for Jetty, and it's incomplete. We got a hole, and that one's going to be on Holmes, I believe. He's saying, who, me? I'll tell you, Marcus Fuller is tough. He sat right in the gun and took the hit. Once again, he released that football and took a big, big hit. Is this that pass interference or a hold? Pass interference would be a 15-yard penalty. Defensive hold. Would be 10. Let's see. It's almost precisely 15 yards with the spot of the infraction took place. It is a first down. It is a first down. They'll spot, step it off 15 yards to the 48-yard line. First and 10 Brown. They have it at the 47-yard line of the Rams. Fuller in the gun. Takes the snap back to pass on first down. Set up the screen to Rosenbauer. Rosenbauer is tripped up across the 44-yard line. Knocked down just inside the 44. And Bruce Hall gets up and runs back into the huddle. Well so executed. Pick up, a, pick up yeah. a three. It's pick up a three. So, but I mean, you're you're in four down territory in my eyes right here. Yeah. Anyways, I mean, so they got three downs here to get a first down. Second and seven for the Bears at the Rhode Island 44 yard line. 7.15 to go in the fourth. Fuller back to pass, looks right, fires right to Strahan, who makes the catch, makes a man miss at the 40, and he's up across the 35, first down. Strahan out of bounds at the Rhode Island 33-yard line. They don't need the three downs. You go to Brian Strahan, and he'll get you the first down on the one down. Great play, makes a URI guy miss him on a nice down and out to the far side, and he picks up the first down. Brian Strahan with over 120 yards receiving. Doles with 117 yards receiving tonight for the Bears. First and 10 at the Rhode Island 33. Take the handoff, Rosie. And plenty of time for Fuller. Gets rid of it middle of the field. Complete to Strahan at the 20-yard line. Another Brown first down. 13 more yards for Brian Strahan. Strahan's having a, a breakout game today. We haven't heard much of him over the first two games, really. We haven't called his name. But I'll tell you, tonight he is on game. 15 catches, 135 yards for Brian Strahan. First and 10 Brown at the Rhodey 20. Fuller. 
fires right to Doles, and Doles is going to be met right at the line of scrimmage. In fact, he may have lost a yard back to the 21. They tried to set up the little screen to Doles, but Rody read it perfectly. Yeah, Rody had great coverage on that, and that was a nice pass, a perfect pass by Fuller into that type of coverage, because from this angle, you could tell that was going to be a tough pass to complete. Second down, 11 for the Bears at the Ram, 21. Three receivers to the near side left. Fuller out of the shotgun on second down and 11. Rams got to be thinking pass here. Make the handoff to Rosenbauer. Fuller back to pass. Pumps. Now he rolls left. Now he fires deep to the end zone. He's throwing it up for grabs it. It is caught. Touchdown. <laughs> Brian Strahan. Unbelievable catch as Strahan goes up. Right on the edge of the sideline and gets his feet down. Brian Strahan and Fuller to Strahan. Unreal. Woo! Looked like Miles Holmes may have mistimed <laughs> his jump and Strahan timed his perfectly and somehow kept his toes in bounds. Well, wait a minute. Penalty marker down and it's oh. coming back. That had to be a late flag. Holding oh. on the offense. That had to be a late flag, Scott. I'll tell you because I'm usually watching out here for flags all the time on that, and I did not see that flag come out. It had to come out late. Uh, I, you know, I just watched the replay. I didn't see where the hold was at the line of scrimmage. I'll tell you that. I that, didn't see it. Doesn't mean it didn't happen. I just didn't see it on that replay. That is a shame because that was such a great pass. Second down and 21 now for the Bears at the Rhode Island 31-yard line. Three receivers left. Fuller operates out of the shotgun on second and 21. Marcus back to pass, looking, fires across the middle, complete to Doles, and Doles takes it down to the 20-yard line. So he gets 11 yards back, and it's going to bring up a third and 10. Now, as you mentioned on the last drive, they're in two-down territory. They're not thinking field goals, so they've got two downs to pick up 10 yards to keep this drive going. Oh, and this is, I mean, we're getting close to five minutes. I mean, this, this is a huge, huge series. Third and ten for the Bears at the Rams 20. Fuller back to pass. Now has time. Fires it to the end zone to Jetty, and it is caught! Touchdown, Bears! Alex Jetty makes the grab! Alex Jetty extends his body up like he's been doing all game and pulls down Marcus Fuller's pass, and the Brown Bears won't be denied. What a Woo. catch by Alex Jetty. Fuller throws it up, and Jetty just stretches <laughs> out and makes the diving grab. And the Bears regain the lead, 33-31. And now a big extra point attempt here from Grant Senny. Out of the hold of Kyle Moreno, the long snapper is Oliver Buca. Snap, hold is down. Senny's kick is on the way, and the kick is good. 5-16 to go in the fourth, and Brown regains the lead. 34-31 over Rhode Island. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football. Scott Credici, John Anderson back at Brown Stadium. It hasn't been the cleanest played game by any stretch, but it's been an exciting game between the Bears and the Rams. The 100th renewal of this rivalry between Brown University and the University of Rhode Island. The Governor's Cup at stake, and they have gone back and forth here in the second half, exchanging the lead a few times. Brown back on top after the touchdown catch by Alex Jetty. 34-31, 5-16 to go, and now Will Senny and the Bears even dare kick it deep to the Rams? You would think not after what happened moments ago when Cooper took it to the house. And they are just going to squib it down the middle, and Rody will fall on it at the 36-yard line. That's going to be good field position, but it beats the alternative of having Cooper take it back. You're right, though, Scott. You had to squib kick it there. I mean, uh, th this kick team has not done well today, and I don't. you couldn't. You couldn't take a chance here to kick that thing deep to Cooper. He's too elusive. I'll tell you, this has, as you have mentioned, been an exciting football game. Back and forth. Still some time here left. And, you know, no one's going home. Everybody's still here, which is great. Brody will start this drive at their own 37. And now Mraz will send one receiver left and one receiver right. They're waiting for the chains to get set on the far side of the field. First and 10 for URI with 5.16 to go in the fourth quarter. Now the Rams have it at their own 37, trailing by three to Brown, 34-31. Mraz out of the shotgun, 
Going to hand it to Cooper running left, and he has got some running room. Cooper breaks it into the secondary, and he's still on his feet down to the Brown 35-yard line. The Bears defense cannot stop Cooper. Co Cooper went off to the left on a sweep right there and just got up inside, and no one could pursue. There were no pursue angles to pick him up, and he just kind of went off to the races and found his way and up that left sideline. And you're right, Scott. The Brown Bears are going to find an answer to him. Harold Cooper has been elusive tonight. That rush puts him up over 100 yards. Handoff this time to Sebastian running left, and Sebastian is hit hard behind the line of scrimmage. So that time they tried the same play, different running back, and the Bears able to come up with a stop. Looked like Twyman was in on the stop. Yeah, Will Twyman was. He came up, did a nice job, scraped across the right side there on the inside linebacker, got up inside the guard there, made a nice hit. Knox Tilke also getting credit for the stop. Harold Cooper, 109 yards on 14 carries, an average of almost eight yards per carry. He also has a couple of touchdowns, one on a kick return, one on the ground. Second and 11 for Rhode Island at the Brown 36. Back to pass, Mraz looking right, firing right, incomplete, intended for Beauvais, and it's going to bring up a third down and 11. Beauvais was open on this outside. It's just bad pass, really. It just off to the right. He couldn't get it, but is it? Huge third down, but I, I got to kind of believe here also that URI might think of being in a fourth down territory with four minutes to go. Yeah, they're, they're not in field goal range here, even though the wind is helping them slightly. So you got to think, yeah, third and 11 from the Brown 36. They're thinking we got two downs to pick up a first. Third and 11, Rody at the Brown 36. Mraz out of the gun, back to pass, set up the screen to Cooper. He makes the catch, avoids one tackle, but not a second. Tilke comes in and cleans him up at the 30-yard line after a pickup of six. It's going to be fourth and five. Good job by Tilke there. Instead of trying to go high on the elusive Cooper, he goes right down for the legs and wraps him up and spins him. And they're going to gonna the try a field goal here. Wow, confidence in your field goal kicker here Ooh. with the wind blowing. Across so, the field. The wind Rohrwasser is, is a freshman whose long is from 33 yards coming into this game. This one would be a 47 yarder from the right hash mark, and the wind is blowing to his right. The snap, the hold is down. Rohrwasser's kick is on the way. This one's not going to be good. No good. It comes up short and to the left. Shocked wow. at that decision by Jim Fleming to go for a 47-yard field goal with a freshman kicker in these conditions. Oh, I am in shock with you, Scott, especially as elusive as Cooper has been. I would have thought on fourth down, you had a screen pass out to him, get him in space, because he's been able to pick yardage up in space. And I, they went for it. You know, I, it's football. They, they had the confidence in the kid, and they're going to try to do it. But the wind is howling up there, and it's blowing across the face. Yeah. Just, you know, and he didn't have the wind to his back. You Tough. know, the one thing you'll say in defense of Rhode Island going for it, obviously the young man must, yeah. have, must be demonstrating a pretty good leg in practice yeah, for them is. to have that type of confidence to send him out there. But that was a tough kick to make. First and 10, Brown. They're going to take over with 319 to go at their own 30-yard line. And now they're going to see if they can run the ball with Rosenbauer here, you would think. Snap. No, Fuller's oh. going to pass on first down. Set up the screen. No. Oh, overthrown. Holy mackerel. Rosenbauer was wide open, and they had the blockers, <laughs> but he, Marcus Fuller overthrew it. Overthrew it. He, when he overthrew it, there were URI players on the other side of those linemen set up. I was thinking, whoa, that almost got picked off. Clock stops with 3.13 to go. Now they hand it to Rosenbauer, and he gets tripped up across the line of scrimmage after a gain of only a yard. You know, that was a tough first play because if you complete it, it's great, but when you don't, the clock does stop, and that helps URI. Now you run the ball. Now you're looking at third down and nine. That's a play that really should have been completed, a high percentage play. It was there, and it would have picked up some yardage, at least five, you would think. Yeah. But unfortunately, the ball was overthrown, and you're right. That makes this a different game right now. Third and eight. Brown with the ball at its own 32. They don't pick up the first down. Rody's going to get it back with a couple minutes and change to go. Two receivers right, one receiver left. Fuller out of the shotgun on third and eight from his own 32. Marcus takes the snap, back to pass, steps up. Now looking to throw. He does, and it is incomplete, nearly intercepted. He was looking for his man, Strahan, but he was well covered on the play. Knocked down by Miles Holmes. You know, we've talked about special teams all game, and now here comes in your punt team, and this is really going to be crucial. 
Grant Senny has got to get a good punt off here, and this Gunners on this coverage team have got to get down the field, and they've got to make a tackle here. I mean, this is a huge special teams play right here for the Brown Bears. And Justin Keynes back deep to return. High snap. Senny gets his leg into it. Keynes moves over, and he's going to let it bounce and pick it up at the 20-yard line. Keynes is going to run out of bounds and be hit out of bounds across the 25-yard line by Quentin Rizek at the 28. 2.13 to go and two timeouts remaining for Rhode Island who trails Brown by three, 34-31. And now it's up to the Brown defense. It's up to that Brown defense coached by Coach Kelleher. It does a great job. I, they're prepared for this, you know that, but this is where it's gonna come down to who's gonna make their plays, who's gonna stay disciplined, get pressure on Mraz. That's gonna be huge to get pressure on him. And, Really, if I'm, if I'm URI, I'm going to the elusive Cooper. I'm going to try to get the ball in his hands somehow, some way. Cooper lines up to the left, and Paul Mraz, the quarterback in the backfield, on first and 10 for the Rams on their own 28-yard line. 2.13 to go, fourth quarter. Bears lead by three. Mraz fires it, left oh. intercepted. Jordan Ferguson takes it to the 20, to the 15, 5, 10. Touchdown, Bears! Jordan Ferguson! Unbelievable! The Brown Bear bench is erupted as Ferguson picks the football up and goes the distance for the Brown Bears. Unreal! I lost track of what yard line he was on. What a play oh. by Jordan Ferguson as Mirage just telegraphed the pass and Jordan jumped the route and that could seal the Governor's Cup for the Brown Bears. I talked to Ferguson today in the parking lot of the OMAC before I came down to the stadium. I said, hey, Fergie, how about time for a pick, a turnover? We need one on defense. He said, I'm going to try. And he comes up with maybe the play of the game. Oh, maybe. I'll tell you, we still got 203, but I got to say one thing. That is the play of the game as it stands right now. What a play. Well, they're up by nine. Senny's point after attempt can make it a 10 point lead if he converts, but either way, it's, it's a, a two, two score game. So Bears really looking good now. Turnovers have really hurt this team through the first two games, and that turnover right there, caused by the Brown defense, a huge help. Oh, unbelievable help. Tremendous as Ferguson jumps the route and goes the distance for the Brown Bears. 40 to 31 Brown with 2.03 to go and now Senny will attempt the point after out of the hold of Kyle Moreno. Snap hold is down, Senny's kick is on the way and it is good, 2.03 to go. It's Brown 41 and Rhode Island 31. We will keep it right here as the Bears in a moment will kick it away to the Rams once again. You what know, a play by Jordan Ferguson. As you've watched this last really kind of eight minutes of this football game, you know, the excitement of Cooper, he goes the distance. The URI bench goes crazy because they're looking for their first win. They're jumping around. Brown comes down. Now Ferguson, he intercepts the pass. He goes the distance. This Brown bench erupts and goes crazy. I mean, the excitement of both of these guys trailing for that first win. What a football game. Well, With all the mistakes listen, that we've had. Been a lot of mistakes, but both teams really demonstrated yeah. they they were hungry yes. for win number one. They yeah. wanted this one badly, yeah. both teams. And, you know, it's a shame somebody's got to come out of here with another loss, yeah. but that's the fact of the matter. And Rhode Island has fought its heart out, as have the Brown Bears. Well, I see now you got, you got to know where Cooper is. Must have is. been a penalty, maybe yeah. an unsportsmanlike conduct. It was for 15 yards. Well, you got to know where Cooper is here. He's on the right side, far side. To me, you got to squint, yeah. kick away from him. I agree, or or just kick it to the left corner right. of the end zone. But you do not no. want to kick it to Cooper. I completely agree. We'll see. I still think Senny could squib it. Senny with the ball teed up at the 50. And he squibs this one down the middle. Cooper touches it. And, you know, he never took a knee. They the officials the immediately blew, blew it dead. It. Yeah, they blew a whistle. I thought he was going to try to take it out of there. I did too. But I think he heard the whistles and he stopped. He never took a knee. I'm wondering why the officials blew the whistle. You could return it out of the end zone. It's your choice. 2.03 to go, fourth quarter. Brown now leading by 10. But certainly if you're a Bears fan, you take nothing for granted at this <laughs> point because this has been a very strange start to the season, the way things have gone wrong. 
You couldn't have said it any better. We're, things happen crazily here. That first quarter, we were lights out, and then we go to the second and third, and we kind of get into a zone, and then we come out in the fourth here and light it up. So, Mraz wanted to get it to Cooper. The Bears read it, and they swarm Mraz under back in the backfield at the 19-yard line. And we'll see if Rody uses one of its timeouts. It's Robbie Hughes in there first, number 99 for the sack. Unbelievable. Look at the replay. They wanted to go to Cooper right here. Yep. But Dewey Jarvis read it perfectly. He was going to pick that one off. <laughs> Mraz back to pass. Steps up in the pocket. Avoids a sack. Now he's going to run with it to the 25, and he slides down at the 28-yard line. And that's okay for Brown because the clock continues to run, and it'll force Rhode Island to use one of its final two timeouts with a minute 32 to play. Kutchke got a hand on Mraz, forced him out of the pocket. So he had no choice but to run, so they're going to have to take a timeout with a minute 32 here and talk about it on third down. But, you know, it makes it easy for this uh, this defense here when you kind of know they're going to pass. You can tee it up a little bit and go for it. And these defensive linemen are really doing a good job for Brown. They've been banged up. We talked about it earlier. And a lot of these guys have had to go a long distance because usually Coach McGrath has got a series of four and four, and you're rotating in and out. With all these injuries, some of these guys have been playing a long time out there. Well, John, what's the old saying? I'd rather win ugly than lose pretty. <laughs> yeah, that may it. be the case for the Bears tonight. <laughs> Doesn't matter how you get the win, just get that first W. And it looks like they're going to get it here tonight. As you just said, it a win is a win. And, you know, we're 0-2. We needed a win for confidence. We needed a win. And, and you know what a win like this does? It, it shows you the confidence that you came from behind to win, too. Right. So now it's going to bring up a third and seven for the Rams from their own 28-yard line. The, the down in distance is irrelevant because they're going to go for it on fourth down if it comes to that. Minute 32 to go. Bears by 10, 41-31. Mraz out of the shotgun. Mraz back to pass. Has time. Fires it across the middle. It is complete. And a first down catch and a great hit made by Will Twyman after Fadre White took it out across the 37-yard line to the 38. Clock stops until they set the chains. Now they run the clock with a minute 24 to go. Mraz gets the snap off immediately. Back to pass, stepping up, looking left side, and it's going to be picked oh. by Will Quigley. And this one is over. Will Quigley makes the pick. They've been going at him all day. I love it. Number 33. Kid doing lobsters in the, in the summer up there with his dad, Captain Bill. Comes up with the big pick. Amazing what turnovers can do for a football team. They can kill you, or they can certainly help you. And tonight, in the end, they sealed away this victory for the Brown Bears. Two interceptions, one by Jordan Ferguson, and that one by Will Quigley. And the Bears are going to walk out of Brown Stadium with their first win of the season and their fifth straight win in this Governor's Cup series. And the seniors of Marcus Fuller, Zach Sparber, and Brian Strahan will do what no other Brown class has ever done beat Rhode Island five times in their careers. That is a great stat. And the victory formation, Fuller takes the knee. He'll have to do it a couple of more times here. But the cup will remain on the east side of Providence. At the press conference Thursday, Jim Fleming said he was looking forward to having the governor hand him the cup after the game. And Coach Estes got up there and said, well, Coach Fleming has them winning the cup. He said, I was going to try to play it down the middle, but I'm telling you right now, that cup, the only way you're touching the cup is to polish it up and give it to me because that cup's not leaving Providence. I can guarantee you that. Bears will have to take the knee one more time, and then this one will be official. Fuller gets up under center, takes a snap, takes a knee, and the Brown Bears will win the 2015 Governor's Cup as the final there. 20 seconds tick off the clock here at Brown Stadium. Excitement there. You can see it in Marcus Fuller. He's running around the field there. He's excited and fired up. I mean, the senior quarterback captain leads the team, obviously, and, you know, a big win. Big win. Big win for confidence. Final but seconds tick off the clock, and the Bears win it tonight over Rhode Island. The final score, Brown 41 and URI 31. We'll take a break, and we'll be back with Brown Bears postgame after this. From Learfield Sports, this is Brown Bears football.